shit, what's going on? Oh, looking at the ceiling, that's great. Uh, hello, I'm here in my fucking upstairs basement. What's going on? Just hanging out. Get a little, get a little fucking, I haven't played this game before, but we're going to try it. It only took me all day to fucking install, so. Here's hoping this bullshit actually fucking works for me today. Woo. Oh, look, it's midnight. Hooray. Hello. Somebody to talk to while I fucking pull my pud here. Oh, it's Tyrone Biggums, a.k.a. Ginger Nation. <laughs> I don't know what it is. From what? I don't, I don't know, know you. you. There's nothing to echo. I, I, mute, mute, mute yourself real quick, Mike. Yeah, it's you. <laughs> I I was muted. How how the fuck are you getting an echo off no, of my no, no, muted no. mic? No, no, no. When you're when you're not muted, he asked you to mute so we could tell yeah. whether it was coming from you or anyone else. But it's you. It's and now that you're not muted. screen sharing, it's gone. Well, I guess I'm. I guess we're in charge of the stream. Are you black? That's a character that I made for a D&D &D game, yeah. They're from Skyrim, so they're not black. Racist. Uh, well, I am racist. What are you going to do about it? Hashtag cancel you on Twitter. All right, how about now? Uh, uh hello? No, no echo. No, but I still okay. hear a buzzing sound. Uh, it's my fucking fan. Ah, well, well. Is that better? No? I tested this earlier, goddammit. I only spent several hours dealing with this. God damn it! Uh, why don't you... Why don't you hop on fucking... Scarlet or Violet, you bitch. Thought we had somebody to play with. I might could, I don't know. That fucking... I'm playing Pokemon Infinite Fusions. I'm gonna do a Nuzlocke ran randomizer. Still buzzing. Fuck you! Well, I don't need fuck your fucking shit, Andrew. Man, fuck the so, Pokemon Infinite Fusions. Get on fucking Scarlet. So where's the Smokester? I don't fucking know. He was gonna be here. He's so baking pies I... with a. He's baking pies with Granny. That's so only kind I... of an exaggeration. So I have a question for you. How 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 are you dealing? How are you dealing with? How are you dealing with the Holocaust in uh, New York? Oh, um, that was over a while ago. Oh, well, I don't know. I saw pictures of New York, like, fucking... Um, in... it might be. We like to swear a lot, so... If you have headphones or something, it should be fine. You know what? I'm gonna send you a package, Guru. I am. I, I'm gonna send you the same Bluetooth headphones that I have, so that you can put one in, and it, you can say, Oh, I can't have a headphone in at work. Okay, here's the great thing about that. You're definitely, gonna, you just, you're definitely gonna send me a package. Wink, wink. You just, uh, wonderful. Um, you just put your hair over it. When I worked at Walmart, that's what I did. I had one Bluetooth headphone in, and I just had long hair and just kept kept it over. I don't know what your hair like looks like because I'm not like constantly checking up on cult members' hairdos and stuff. I have other things that are more important, but. Uh, yeah, so... Or, or if you want better audio quality, get fucking Raycon to sponsor Will Kincaid. No, they're <laughs> not gonna do that. I don't have any following anymore. The only people who... The only videos that get, like, 10,000 views are my shorts. And I'm thinking about just going into the AI president business. Fucking... AI presidents are basically a cottage industry. I don't. Yeah, uh, but it, there's already enough people doing it, bro. So I don't know if you'll get a lot of yeah, attention. But, yeah, but Wait. there's only like three that are any good, and then there's like one or two that are like clearly made by fucking middle schoolers. I don't Wait. know. I was watching one that said that uh, they were talking about uh, Washington D.C. versus more a uh, comic version of D.C. And fucking Trump was talking to uh, Biden is like one has the Riddy Riddler and the other one has the Kitty Fiddler. 
<laughs> so, yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that one. I think that Look was a one-off. It's not a series. Look at this. This is fucking said. great. So for any, okay. So here's the thing. This game is fucking amazing. I'm gonna show you how amazing this fucking game is. All right. Um, but the problem is it's PC. Well, you can do it on Android, but it's super complicated to install on Android. This is not a ROM hack. This is a game from the ground up. It, you can't get this fuck on, on fucking iOS. You can get it on Android. And you can play it, and it does have multiplayer online. So, this is a game that anyone with a computer or an Android phone could feasibly do. The problem being, it the installation process is very complicated, and it's not spelled out directly and you do have to do some hunting i may do a video on how to actually install this like for current era because all the videos i found were dated and they're only like a, like a month or two behind so like getting the sprites pack for the fusions getting like you they, they didn't tell me anywhere that i had to go to the discord to go get them that you can't find them and then the, the Discord says that the the link that you find on, uh, not Mediafire, but whatever the fuck it was, Mega Upload, or no, nah, it's gone now, whatever the fuck I used, that, that's not going to let you do it because it's got a 2 gig uh, data cap for file transfers. And that was a lie. And the one that they wanted me to use that said it didn't, had it. So, it's very complicated. Okay, but... Hello. All I'm saying is you should get on fucking Scarlet so you can help me beat the rest of the Titans. Um, you know, Mike could. Because I, I literally play. just, I just grinded out literally the rest of the gym, but gems that I needed. I'm so fucking tired, my dude. I'm gonna try to do that with you, but all right, let's fucking let's let's fucking go, my guy. You're not gonna Whoa. be able to hear the audio, but I will. Okay. Uh, um. Well, did you did, did you see what Spooky said in the chat? He so. He saw a parody account, Mid Athena, goddess of wisdom and welfare. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, okay, here's the first thing that is nice. Check this out. You can change your age, and this does affect your character. What's the maximum age? 17, which is what okay. I'm going with because I'm not a, I'm not a pedophile. <laughs> anyway, um, and, oh, I have to actually type this fucking garbage. Okay, hold on. Tyrone Biggums. Uh, oh. By the, way, by the way, the link isn't pinned. Yeah, well, if you, if you care it. about it so much, then you fucking do it. I'm not your I mom. can't. I'm not, I'm not the mom. host. You, you, you're, you're the only one who can pin the link. Ah, uh, shut up, Jew. Anyway. Uh, okay. You're a Jew. Oh, fuck. So, Steven Crowder's doing Cultural Appropriation Month on Ladder with Crowder, and I know a lot of you aren't going to care about that, but um, this week's theme is New York. So, th I've, I've got a buddy in town. He's homeless and black, and he's got a really cool afro, but he totally looks homeless, right? There's nothing <laughs> not homeless about him a in terms of appearance. Like... Raggedy ass clothes has a dog for some reason. Remember that that fucking Doomsday movie that came out in like 2012 or whatever? Or no, it wasn't 2012. It was like the early 2000s. I am legend. Them. No, the one where climate change kills people. Oh, uh, the day after tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember the homeless guy out front of the public library in New York City? Yeah. Yeah, that guy, but with an afro. Anyway. Yeah, but that movie sucked. Was... Well, yeah, it did suck. Anyway, oh my god, I had Japanese for dinner, and I have acid reflux because I am 30, and I feel every fucking year of it. Anyway, I need to fucking get a gym membership because what I'm doing ain't working. So, um, anyway, so I was gonna put on all my Jew shit, for lack of a better term. And, uh, like, the hat, the small hat and everything, and I was going to run away from him, and I was going to fucking go ass cocksucking. There we go. Uh, I was going to let him chase me with a broken beer bottle and send that photo in for Cultural Appropriation Month and uh, see if I won the New York 
category. So I'm going to try to track him down tomorrow. Um, that's, Jesus that's fucking the, Christ. I have to go find a homeless man. That's my a specific homeless man. That's my uh, that's my thing for tomorrow. It's on the to-do list. Okay, moving on. Fuck, I got to dip for a bit. I'll be back when I can. Oh, uh, you have AIDS. Okay, bye. Later. Later. I'll be back. Oh, ginger, ginger. Oh, ginger, ginger, ginger. I... Uh. Um, okay, what should I do? Because I, I haven't actually played this. I've just seen it been played. I'm gonna... I want to keep it I mean, normal. Well, uh, reversed means that types that are normally super effective are not effective at all. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep it normal. Turn auto save on. Yeah. Automatically download missing sprites, yeah. Okay. Oh boy. Um sure. It's got the Digimon World 3 fucking soundtrack going right now and that really fucking threw me off. Hmm. Oh DNA splicers, that thing from that game in the fifth generation, yay! I wonder, I wonder why we can't, we like, we can't hear the sound. Like, what, like? Oh, I, I had to turn it off because you said you were getting an echo. Oh, I don't you, understand. Okay, that, that was okay. That, that's that, never that happened. That's that's literally never happened before. Anyway, um, you know what I should do? Um, Jesus Christ, our cross. Hold on. Uh. There we go. Because when I turn the music on, it's going to double up in my fucking ear. Come on, you fucking noir. It's going to take a second because it's a really long video. Uh, it's a really long audio file that's looped for like a half an hour. Yeah. There we go. That's better. Um, I'd probably turn that down a little bit. Did a fucking gnat follow me in? These fucking ants. Anyway. Okay, cool. Now we now we can get back to this. Alright, here we go. Okay, so this is the thing. You can fuse Pokemon together. There are something like, I don't know, a hundred thousand Pokemon in this game on that basis. Um I don't know exactly how many there are, but it's a lot. And some of them are custom sprites that are handmade by people <laughs> in the Discord with their own mm -hmm. unique Pokédex entries. And yes, the Pokédex does actually have unique entries for each of them. And they have their own unique stats. And you can com you can mix and match moves from both Pokémon however you see fit. And uh, they do combine learn sets. So when you level up a if the two Pokemon you have fused have learned something at level 16, both of those pop. Um, but we're going to be playing. Um, we're going to be playing a standard Nuzlocke. Um, so items are allowed, uh, healing's allowed, shit like that. I have to catch the first Pokemon in any route. Um, I don't have to catch it immediately, but I can only play with the the ones that I catch mm. on that the first one that I catch in that route or in that location so like if there's like a patch of grass in a town that's fine or water or whatever the fuck it is um, if the Pokemon's knocked out it's dead and I have to release it or else put it in the PC is sort of like a, a, a Pokemon cemetery sort of situation and they can't be revived and when I run out of Pokemon, that's just the end of the game. Um, and it's a hard reset. Um, so, um, I am terrible at these. So, I thought I'd do this because it'll let me move into the next game faster. I think it's possible. Uh, I'm not going to deliberately fall, but, you know. Um, let's see, what else? I, th I think that's it. Oh, yeah. Um, if you get an encounter with the same Pokemon, you can re you can reroll. So, like, if I start out with, like, a fucking, I don't know, a, 
it's feasible that you could see any Pokemon. Legendaries, regular, it doesn't fucking matter. Um, in this version. So, like... Start with a Charmander or something, and then I happen... My first encounter, or any other encounter happens... Or my first encounter in any location, rather, happens to be a Charmander then I can re-roll. Uh, the Nuzlocke doesn't start until I get Pokeballs, so um, if I like if I lose to the rival, that doesn't count. Um, yeah. So I think that's I think I've explained a Nuzlocke. I know that a lot of people here don't know what that is. Uh, don't play Pokemon. Don't understand it. It's okay. I have zero connection to this, so my feelings aren't gonna get hurt if something dies forever. Um, uh, there's a lot of creatures in here that are just gonna look fucking awful or goofy or gross or both or some combination rather so all right uh, oh and I have to nickname them that's the other cap yeah okay that's just to that's to try to get you attached it's part of the the casualty neat I'm still here, by the way. Yeah, I know. I was just exploiting all that gobbledygook. Yay! Go go to the... You're gonna be a Pokemon trainer. Welcome to the Pokemon League. Good luck, you dipshit. Cool. It's, the letter said go get a fucking Pokemon or whatever. What's his name? His name is... His name... Uh, uh, his name is Carl. Uh, that, his name is Carl. That's that's a good one. Gotta love it. Oh, okay, cool. It's, it, he's harassing me because I'm I'm gay. He hates me because I'm gay. He's he's Trump. He's he's MAGA. He's he's a. Uh... Oh, okay. Well, um. Yeah, so I'm playing with a controller because um, I'm a I'm a fucking I'm a adult, um, and I'm one of those fucking guys. Um, where the fuck am I? This is Pallet Town. Is that what they're <laughs> saying this is? This doesn't look familiar. <coughs> okay. Your well, mother doesn't is... look familiar. Oh. Oh, shut the fuck up. Oh, it's the shtick again. All right, cool. Grab, grab a Pokemon. Uh, it's it's got Charmander. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna pick Charmander because I always pick Charmander because I am in this in in the, in the head canon of this game I'm I'm gay. Do I want to give it a nickname? Yeah, I'm gonna name it. Um, I'm gonna name it fucking uh, uh, Q. And then if it dies, then uh, good. Anyway. Hooray! Oh, so he got DNA splicer, so I have to fight... I have to fight both of his fucking piece of shits. Look, oh my god, it's squirt sore. That sounds really fu That sounds like a horrible disease. Okay, so this is a grass water. And I'm not gonna have anything, really, anyway. So I'm just gonna... Okay. Oh, why don't you just spam offensive moves? Because that's not what he's going to do. There we go. Okay, well, I won the rival fight. Okay, didn't think that was going to happen. I was pretty sure I was going to get my ass handed to me. That's usually how these things go. Pokemon's lives don't matter to Will. Understood. See? He gets it. Nah, I... It, it, you know... In the game, I'm I'm gay or whatever, so it's just a product of uh, me being gay. I don't value uh, life of any kind. Uh, it's that's a thing gay people believe, right? Mm, Look at this no. fucking turbo sprint. Look at me. I'm Sanic. You're too slow. Ah, uh, some some. I'm I'm Sanic. I gotta gotta go gotta gotta go fast. So far, other than the squirt sore, 
uh, other than the herpes monster that we just fought. There's really nothing, you know, in the wild here. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty standard so far. I, I did not mean to do that. The controls are not very. They're a little, they're a little delayed. Um, I, I think that's probably just because I'm streaming this. Hopefully. Cool. All right. Um, and if this works like it, I talk to this guy, I get Oaks fucking whatever the fuck. And then all I got to do is walk my fat ass back to town and give Professor Dingledorf his, his AIDS medication. I, that's 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 the that's the canon of this game. He's got AIDS, you know. Pro Professor Dingledorf has AIDS. I, I I believe that, and that that's that's my head cannon. Oh, yeah, it's the Pokeball. Uh, he gives me f okay. So the Nuzlocke has officially started. Oh, one thousand seven hundred fifty. Or one hundred seventy-five thousand. Wow, I'm fucking dumb. Okay, cool. Um, this is tricky. Um, boop, 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 boop. Ah, fuck. Okay, well we have to catch the first one we see. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try not to kill this thing. Oh my god. Oh, uh-oh. You turned Q into a Pokemon. I I did. It's because he's orange. Okay. Okay, please catch. Please work. No, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh, fuck. Okay, cool. I need to... I, need to I hate it when some... that fucking happens. Seriously, it's yeah, uh, I gotta give this a fucking work. nickname. What the fuck? Who the fuck am I gonna call this one? Uh, f fuck it. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it Andrew. Andrew G. There we go. Andrew G. Is now in my. Okay. Cool. Are you? Oh, I, why is it going so fast? Do you have it like set? Do you have like set to? No, I don't. I don't have any. Oh, look at this fucking. This is a Pidgey Rattata fusion. What the fuck? See, that's what I was hoping would happen. Is I would see one of these fusions. That way I could get two for one. That's the only benefit to playing this over other ones. Is that you can catch, technically, two Pokemon at once. I mean, okay, is this well. is, is 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 this a fan made game or? It's ground up, yeah. It's not even a ROM hack. It's a, uh, it's like I had to patch stuff. <laughs> like that's not a traditional Pokemon file. No. Okay, I'm surprised. I'm surprised Nintendo. Surprised Nintendo didn't say, "Fuck you, stop making it," because they love to send cease and desist letters to people making people making making projects using their IPs. Sega, Sega, yeah. Sega, Sega, Sega actually. Sega actually loves that. In fact, actually gave some of them fucking jobs. Okay, so we we have an encounter. Oh fuck! Um, Good ball. This could be a run ender because this is not here in the ordinary game. Can I? Oh, yep. I can just skip that for now. Cool. And it's a fucking rat. Wonderful. I was so hoping that I would get a Nidoran. <coughs> because Nitto King is my favorite. Okay. Um. Wait, I can actually hear the sound now. No, that's... I'm actually playing music. Oh. I'm playing music through StreamYard itself. Okay. Oh, get okay. That ball. makes sense. 
getting the ball, getting the ball. Okay, cool. It's a female, so I'm going to call it... Who's in the comment section? I'm going to call it Guru. It's not a dog, but it is what it is. Alright. Call it Guru. Sweet. I swear to God, if it just spawned... Okay, cool. Okay, this this can go one of two ways. Oh, cool. It's a Spiro Pidgey fusion. That's fine. I can I can deal with this. Don't fucking okay, cool. Yeah, you lost, you bitch. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody's going to give me a fishing rod here. Um, I guess I should talk to people and see, because this is a totally different game from the ground up. Um... Um, oh no, I think I understand all this. I don't even know about that shit. Um. Oh. Okay. Well, that'll be helpful later. I didn't, the g gems are in this game. Gems are fucking broken as shit. Splicers, balls, I don't need any of that shit yet. I will later, though. Um, let's not do the rival fight yet. Oh, I just went in there. Sorry. Um, maybe this house has a rod. Okay. Oh, there's that alcoholic guy. He finally moved on with his life. Wonderful. In red version, in the English version, he needs coffee. In the Japanese, he's drunk. These are the perils of localization. Why is it so long that, you know, that he needs he needs drinks in either way? It's like, okay, oh, you know, we, 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 we can't expose kids to these, to alcohol. Okay. I don't know. There's they they took out the alcohol, but they left the gambling in this game. They, you can go to a legit which is, casino, which is stupid. Holy cow! Yeah. Thank you. All right. Cool. cool. Okay. So here's our next encounter, and it's a hoot hoot rat attack. Wonderful. Well, at least I didn't have one of them. I guess. <sighs> Yo, they're gay. I did. I put it. I put, I put it on the. I put it on the grass. There you go. I just beat the Dawn Fan Titan. Oh, you did? Yep. Yeah. Oh, see, this is one of the unique uh, Pokédex. It's the Mouse Owl Pokémon. It is the internal or it has an internal organ that senses the Earth's rotation. Even while asleep, it constantly moves its ears and listens for danger. Okay. Mm. Well, that's disturbing. Would I like to give the? Yeah, sure. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna call you Spooky. There you go. Um. I used my encounter for this area. The day-night cycle is like going like nuts. Um. Okay. You want you want you want a trick, but you can't leave it there for that long. No. Let's see. Go to the Viridian Forest, I suppose. 
say that's what a hoot hoot is supposed to look like. Okay, is this a thing? Oh, poison mushroom. What the fuck? Did that just respawn, like, right away? That's weird as fuck, yo. Athena, goddess of wisdom and welfare. That's actually funny. <laughs> that is that that is hilarious. Um, does this count as my encounter? Because it's not in the grass. I think it must. Um. Yeah. No, oh, that was easy. Um, yeah, we're gonna... The, no. Oh, I forgot to give it a fucking name. Aw, oh, god damn it. Alright, so I think I have... Uh, I think I have enough Pokemon now. Yeah. Um, okay, what's gonna make this the least nightmare fuely? Um, hold on. Did Twitten leave? Is he still here? Oh, there, okay. He's still I'm here. still here. I'm just muted. Okay. Give me one second. Well, I have a thing that'll let me see. Because I, I, I have limited resources when it comes to this fusion thing. Okay, so... What is... I'm just curious. Um, Charmander and Spinarak. Okay, that's like not too bad, I guess. Um, what about uh, Charmander Pidgey? Um, to I make mean, his attack goes down too, as you can see. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I could now, nah, cause um, let's see what the Ratata looks like. Oh fuck off! I don't know. I mean, this looks good. This looks better than the rest so far. But. Yeah, I don't know. There's not a whole lot of good options. Maybe we should just keep it as is for now. Yeah. I think we're going to keep it as is. Um. Yeah, time is progressing super fast. I don't know what the fuck the deal is with that. Um. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a Spiro to trade this guy, so we're out of Bellsprout. Which sucks, because that would have been really helpful for Brock. So I'm pretty sure I'm just going to get my ass whooped, like, right away, but that's okay. 
Uh, wait, are you go? Are you, are you are you are you going to fight the legendary four already? Uh, What's that? I, I forget what the fuck they're called. I haven't played Pokemon in forever. The legendary four? No, the oh the elite four. No, yeah. you can't. You, Jesus. No, you need eight. No, you need eight badges first. Yeah, right. What the fuck? Okay, I got a berry. Sweet. Right. Have on. fun with the. Uh... Rock spooky cock cramming in your ass. Yeah, and he's got fusion, so who knows what kind of fucking demon hell spawn is gonna crawl out of his anus. Fucking ramming you in the butthole. Look at that fucking. He's. Jesus Christ. Bye. At least I can grind levels really e Oh, I should have healed. Okay, well, whatever. Um, at least I can grind levels really easy. See, that's what I wanted was the Nidoran, but I'm not getting it, so whatever. Oh, that is not the move I wanted. There it is. It's the Squirt Sword. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, what can I sack? Um, I can't really, um, afford anything, but I guess since I already technically okay. have... So? Oh, oh, I think I, I already technically have, uh, a Rattata. It's just fused with something else right this second. Oh, you can't. Okay, cool. No cash. Which I was not expecting. Smellia later. Okay, whatever. Yeah. I don't know why this guy wants to sniff me all the time. Maybe he's related to Joe Biden. Oh! There's Brock. Well, that was quick. Well, we're going to die. How, 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 uh, how, what level is Pokemon? I don't know, but... I guess we'll find out. Oh, this isn't like the... Okay. That's a cool statue, I guess. Um... What's the deal with this? Nothing. Okay, I can't do anything here. Now, in Pokemon Red version, there were some areas in between here where you could catch Pokemon in the grass and they are technically a different route altogether. So, that's what I was thinking. But I clearly thought wrong. Let's see. That's what you get for being a bigot. I guess, but we're like flying. We've got, uh, what do we got here? We've got five Pokemon. That's not great. And that's pretty... We're locked in with this fucking team now. And I have no EXP share. And trying to swap out a level two into anything is fucking dangerous. All, all the time. But, you know... Then why not go grind for level? I could do, yeah. Oh, well, that's not what I want to do. It's fucking hard. I'm literally just mashing buttons because it's Viridian Forest, and that's what my brain is trained to do. Since mm. I was, since I was a, a wee young Kincaid. Um, no, nah, nah, it's fine. Die. Death. He doesn't have arrows yet. Oh. Clutching, clutching. Arrow. Is my dude in the background playing Tears of the Kingdom? No. No. Minecraft. Oh, oh look! I could have had a a a, a pie 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 a pip pie a pea pie. Oh, that sounds awful. Well, that sucks. I accidentally picked up the spinner rack because I don't understand this game's mechanics yet that well.
what happens. Hey, uh, Will. Yeah. What do those black rods do in Scarlet? Uh, they unlock the the ruinous right. Pokemon for each in, of the four regions in the game. I, I have two out of the four. No, I mean, there's like 30-something of them. Yo, I will be right back. I think I hear my kids screaming. I'll be right back. So, I guess we're, um... There's a freaking contraption here on this freaking, uh, nether portal. That's where what? Well, I guess we're, I guess, I was gonna say, I guess we're holding up to, you know, we're, uh, we're holding the stream up, but, I guess not. I mean, I'm just playing Pokemon. And I'm just here Little for... homie had a nightmare. He oh. did now, though. Yeah, he alright. By the way, Will, I'd like to thank yeah. you. Oh yeah? For what? I don't know, just being your faculty self. Oh. And, you know, working hard. Yeah. I, why the, the, the color coding for this is... I, I have to, like, fucking really... Ugh. Show me that Can spooky you... cut. I'm just a mushroom collector, and it's a Paris. Oh, that's that's great. Another Pokemon that would have been cool to have that I can't have because I'm playing a Nuzlocke. Yeehaw. Um, hey guys, we have a problem. Um, <laughs> I'm listening to Q's background. All I heard was, uh, guys, we have a problem. This forest. I just caught me a motherfucking amphoros. You caught you a what? Amphoros. Wow. Well, there was there, there, there was there was fire for a second. Let's go. And then the rain started. This is one of my favorite electric types. <sighs> oh. Okay. Ooh. My bad. Alright, I gotta go. So how many of these I fucking? I'm mother... oh, okay. back where I motherfucking started. Sorry. Probably. I yep. I sure fuck am. I sure fuck am, my guy. Dude, it sucks how long this it takes so fucking Pupitar to evolve into Tyranitar. Yeah, that's fucking nuts. Does... How do you? Why does he always spawn in there? Like, why do I have to wait? Forever for you to evolve, you piece of shit. But it's a shiny. I have a shiny oh, Pupitar right, right now. So forever for you to evolve, you fucking scam and cock. Wait, wait, <laughs> them so I'll have a shiny Tyranitar when I evolve this bitch. Oh. You're scamming piece of shit, fucking bug lizard. I hope you okay, fucking God. choke on Mac and Chase. Uh, what? Well, is Cat in the chat or something? 
No. human dial tell the situation. Erectile dysfunction, sexual oh, no, Darn, yeah. my cock doesn't work. Get the mac and cheese. Darn, I can't feel my pee situation. <laughs> so, uh, Why are we who, so mean to Brett? I don't Why? know. So who's in the running for Piss Baby of the Year award? So far. You know what? I hadn't really considered it, but it is I mean, not, isn't it it is too early? That time. Isn't it it's too early? It's that time, you know? Well, I mean, and to it's... start making considerations here in a few months. You know? I mean, it's... Summer, any given season is really only like just about three months long, right? So, like, by the time we get to summer, it'll already almost be over in the grand scheme of things. Mm-hmm. Your mother. It's half bird. Why? Why is it half bird? Is there something here? Is that no? It's just randomly differently colored grass. I fucking hate that. What an ass design! Oh, sweet. There's grass here. Okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna fucking heal up first. No joke. Oh, please don't be another fucking Pidgey or a rat or whatever. Remember, if you run into the same Pokemon, you can actually not have to catch that Pokemon. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So technically, even if it's a Pidgey or a, uh, a fusion of a monster you already caught, it yeah, doesn't count. I, total I totally forgot about that. Do I have Ow. this one? Yes. Oh, oh, I can't believe I didn't think of that. You're right, though. Yeah, man. Fuck you. I mean, my buy me dinner first. Oh, come on. Alright, well, it's this or nothing, I guess. Oh, cool. I, I am overleveled to fight it. Okay, cool. Well, at least it didn't die. Like my faith in humanity. Are you fucking kidding me? I. Thank you. Alright, well, I will learn from my mistakes and not do that again. The You're gay with I'm AIDS? You, oh. Why are you hurting me? Please stop. No. Oh, cool. Repel. I um, thought those were I... Nuzlocke. You couldn't use those in Nuzlocke. No, it's just a standard Nuzlocke. It's, it's a hardcore Nuzlocke. You can't do all that shit in. Uh. Um. What? Okay, so I beat Brock and he's gonna give me a sparkly flute. Great. Okay, so there's a fuck. There's the gym. Here's the fucking museum. I wonder if there's anything worthwhile in here. Man, I'm surprised you didn't catch a Magikarp and name it after me. Yeah, I went with Charmander. You're welcome. Appreciate it. And if I live long enough, I'll be a beautiful Charizard. Yeah. Isn't that fucking special? Are Pretty just special. Is it, I just talked to everybody. Oh, look! They ported the sprite thing from fucking black and white from Ow. the normal museum. <laughs> which, for some reason, it has Yo. fossils of Pokemon. It's I don't understand it either, but there you go. Have you ever... Sure. Question number one. Okay, the dome fossil is Kabuto. Question number two. What is the only fossil Pokemon that cannot evolve? Okay, so this is kind of a trick question because these two can evolve. That one's not a fossil Pokemon, so that would be Aerodactyl. 
Skull Fossil, it's Cranny Dose. I'll be back in a second. Um, Mud Slap. Ooh, they can all learn Mud Slap. Oh, but I need something for Brock. Need something that knows a water type move there, bud. Yeah, I, I can't. Um. All right, that was my own. That's base. That's basically gonna be my only opportunity to to deal with that shit. Oh fuck! Is this the guy? Oh no, he got scammed by the guy. Iron. Cock and shock and fucking Magikarp shells when showing me fucking Magikarp and it's like golden eggs. And it has gone over the uh. Oh, I can rent a room for a night? Yeah, that way in Sleep case you have a Vaporeon. 12 hours. Okay, cool. It's just before morning. Neat. Uh, I better check this guy out. Um. Quests. I can. I have quests I can do. There. What in tarnation? Fully a, no, I don't have a bug. Three tiny mushrooms. Oh, don't I have them? Nope, I don't have that either. Okay, cool. So I have quests now. Well, that's neat. That's a neat feature. Is there going to be a guy right here that tells me to go fuck myself if I try to... No, I could just go. I don't even have to fight Brock if I don't want to. Well, that's... That's... Now, lit? Is that a... Did they say that? I hear they say that. They don't say that. They don't. No. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get six more balls. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. I'm watching the fight dog. Um. <clears throat> Sweet. This is probably the best ODS, uh, OST in yeah, any fucking Akatik Pokemon. Akatik City? Yeah. Fucking gold, silver, crystal. Ah, oh, Midnight left because he's gay. I miss gold and crystal. Those were the good old days. Sorry, Guru. I'm gonna shift you up for this fucking pink thing. Hey, yo, you know what you should do? Uh, what? You should totally get on Starlet and help me beat this fucking Dragon Titan. Alright. Yeah, give me a minute. Um. Let's do this gym fight and see if I actually. Okay, now I've stopped moving lightning fast for no reason. Onward bound, Frodo. Jedi slay. 
Mm-hmm. And now I'm back to lightning speed again. That's your great, great story. Dude, I uh, I may or may not have cheated the system a little bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because there were gyms that I was so over leveled for and under level for, and I still beat them anyway. Nah, whatever. They built it into the game. It's their fucking fault. Ain't true. Like the water gym, bro. I like clean sweep them with a fucking Raichu. As you do. I'm gonna battle these trainers just for the fucking experience at this point. Why not? Oh, it's a Geodude Caterpie. That's. That's cursed. That's a penis. That's just straight up a, That's just straight up a cock. I wish I had the arms of Geodude. Oh, yeah, actually, that'd be a cock with arms. Oh, no. Oh, look, it's a sand dude. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Some of these fusions are definitely fucking cursed, bro. Alright. I want to go heal up real quick, like. And then we're going to take on Brock. I'm going to stomp on his cock. Hell yeah, he's probably got an Onyx and it's fused with something horrific. It's probably going to be an Onyx Caterpie fusion and it's going to just be basically be a big fucking donger. <laughs> big, big old dingle donger. I'm Brock. I like rock type Pokemon. Do you want to be my friend? I'm Wait, not autistic. I have to register? Yeah, alright, cool. Um... You know what? My name is Brock, and I'm totally not autistic. I can only use two Pokemon? Are you fucking kidding me? It's a two-on-two? -two? Is that a rock? For oh, fuck. Tell me I can... Oh, fuck. I underestimated what was about to happen. No. Oh, oh my fucking God. Oh, well, that's the end of Quentin. Ah, uh, it was nice knowing you. Damn. Alright, well, we're done with that game. Hooray. Oh, well, we'll restart next time. Alright, so what are we doing here? Uh, if you want, we can put, I gotta do the Dragon Titan, and then I'm done with Titans. Uh, uh, I don't know how that works, but I will try. Where is I, the little controller thing? Here it is. I, I also have to do, like, th all of the other, I put, like, one of the fucking star Team Star battles, but I genuinely don't give a fuck about them. I don't know if I can help with Titans. Can I do that? I think so. Um, you should Google it. Yeah, hold on. <sighs> okay, well that was fucking weird. Strange things are happening to me. Okay. Did you watch Toy Story 2 today? No. So, I'm, I'm guessing looking, I'm looking it up right now to see. All right. Smells like a spooky cock. Oh man. Where the fuck did I just put my? Oh, 
Dude, you need to make a uh, applesauce to electric boogaloo. Mike could. I think it'd be worth it. Uh, let's see. Take photos, catch Pokemon, play through the story. You could just play the game like normal if you really want, but your friends won't be able to. Um, while your friends won't be able to take on gym tests or Team Star battles, it's great that it's still available to do despite playing online. Oh, I can't help you at all. Are you fucking serious? Yeah, we can do terror raids. That's what we can do. That's well, pretty fucking gay. That is pretty fucking gay. Uh, hey, do you have a quick claw by chance? Um, I do not. Okay. All right. Well, Carl called me, so that, this is the part of the show where I'm going to talk to Carl. All right, so I gotta, I'll have to, I'll have to hit you up another time because I can't play, I can't help you with your, uh, your thing. I mean, you can still get on and just like, you know. Um, yeah. Well, let me do the call part with Carl. Give me one sec. I'll put... All right. You can hang out, but I gotta do this. Um, do, 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 do. I'm waiting. Okay. Home of the burger, what's your beef? Yeah, hey, what's going on, my hoonding? What's going on? I was just chilling out. I was playing some video games and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm so fucking tired, bro. Of? Abraham Lincoln mostly today. Oh God, you're gonna be on that again. All right. All right. Let's hear the let's hear the fucking pitch. Really? Like it? Like fucking a long dead president's gonna give you a bad day? What are you a fucking vagina? I hate fucking Alexander Hamilton too. He's a cunt. He's you know a what? dead cunt. You know, you know who? You know who shouldn't be able to ruin people's days? Dead presidents. Oh, it's just that. Uh, excuse me. Uh. Abraham so, Lincoln. So, right, so let's let's hear the pitch. Oh, okay, Abraham, uh, Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln was a tyrant. Yeah, yeah he was uh, a dictator. He was America's first dictator, and he's the reason that we have all the problems we have today. And here's why. Oh God, dude. I feel like I feel like I'm about to step into a genders theory like class or something like that. No, this is super logical though. But hear me out, okay? During. During Lincoln's presidency, he assumed wartime powers without authorization of Congress. And then he he basically said he has wartime powers because of a thing in the Constitution that says the president has a duty to, to like, um, f faithfully e execute the laws of the land. And, and that in, in no way ties to that. He just... And then later Congress convened and they were like, well, since he ha since he's declared that he has wartime powers, it should be assumed that the motion passed to give him wartime powers despite the fact that he did not. And, and like, the United States of America is supposed to be the United States of America. Like, the, like we fought back and forth for hundreds of years about this, but I believe fundamentally... 
that states come before federal power and that federal authority is reserved for uh, a unique set of things and foreign wars are one of them and but you can't just get wartime powers because you said so because you felt like it he suspended habeas corpus he um he appropriated slaves and then abandoned them Right, so he violated the amendment that would be uh, that didn't exist yet, that would be derived from his bullshit Emancipation Proclamation, that in the document itself says that doesn't apply to northern states. Right, he 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 um, quartered he he quartered uh, soldiers in in like homes of private citizens. Without compensation, and he <coughs> he put a bunch of bullshit tariffs and taxes in place to help fund his war effort. He started the war at Sumter when he said he said, "Don't worry, guys, who are going to be the Confederacy in a hot minute. Don't worry, guys. I'm totally going to give you this fort." And then they were like, "Okay, thanks for the fort." And then they show up to the fort, and what happened? He fortified the goddamn fort, and he was sitting there with guys, and he specifically told them not to fire, even when fired upon, and basically forced the would-be Confederacy in a no-win position where they had to fire on him. They had to fire on the fort. <laughs> because Lincoln didn't inherit a civil war. He inherited a secession crisis that had been going on for quite some time, and then he instituted the draft without a constitutional amendment, without the authorization of Congress. He just decided that he had that. He jailed at least 12,000 of his political opponents for criticizing him in papers. Most of the papers were out of New York. Then he marched, uh, he marched the New York State uh, National Guard into New York City and had them fire upon civilians who were protesting the draft, uh, killing uh, dozens of police officers, um, the, our nation's own soldiers, and um, other people of note, and God knows how many fucking civilians. He deported his political opponents to Canada on more than one occasion. I mean, do you want me to go on? I don't think there's a single fucking statute in the Constitution that Lincoln didn't violate in the first, like, four years of the of his presidency that he was actually involved in a, um, instigating the war to begin with. Okay. Um, in some instances, I, I think you have a valid criticism at a micro level but I, I'm not sure if what you're describing really fits and runs along to tyranny in a negative form so like I can because here's the thing here's the problem you have to you have to wrestle with when you're kind of presenting the argument you are specific path he chose to reach no slaves you know or, or yeah or I am slaves. because and I'll tell you why because decades earlier the English had abolished slavery without a single drop of bloodshed and so well, in several also, other they countries al they also had a very old government which is which which is a different you know keep in mind too at Lincoln's period of time, you know what we're we're within what about a hundred years of the Declaration of Independence? Yeah, so, roundabout it was like ninety so, or yeah, eight, so eight, eighty nine, eighty eight. We're within the very. I mean, most of the amendments that we would end up cherishing and would give, you know, a lot of the rights that we really respect today, or clarify the rights that we should have, wouldn't even haven't even been drafted yet at that point. Except so, for all the ones that I mentioned, and, Carl. Well, Thirteenth Amendment onward is 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 lacking, and therefore the clarifications that it brings to the others is also lacking. 
Okay, so, well, well, fruit of the so press, the quartering let act. Just you, let me just give you, let me just give you the primary foundation that you have to struggle with to make to basically land on the point that Lincoln needed to not do the things he did to ensure the conclusion of no slaves, to accept the fact that it would have been better to do it without all of those things and potentially we still have slaves so it's almost the argument is that lincoln should have reformed slavery instead of removing it because if everything that you said for instance was implemented or went the other way what you would at the very best case scenario you could think is that slavery never would have been abolished it just would have been reformed Okay. And maybe that's okay. I'm not. I'm not even necessarily saying that that's that absolutely bad. I'm just saying that that's kind of the scenario you have to deal with. Okay. Well, what makes you think Lincoln even like wanted to free the slaves in the first place? Because ev all the evidence points to no. Well, you know his father Thomas was a slave catcher, right? There was there was no reason for the war without it, really, because if you're if no, you're that's not about, true. That's not well, true. It, it, Lincoln wanted to institute. It wanted Lincoln was of the, the, only, the Lincoln only was issue. of the Hamiltonian school of no. of federalism because before Lincoln was a Republican, he was a Whig. Right. The, the party remove, of Hamilton. Once you remove slavery from the equation as a motivating factor, the only thing you're left with is economic. And it's because the northern states were leaning towards industry while the southern states were leaning towards agriculture. Yeah, and, and let me was, well, let me tell you something. Let me put it... Okay, that's a good point. Let me put it to you it, this way. You know how... It, Californians say all the time that if they were their own country, they'd be the third largest economy in the world. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, well, let me put it to you this way. The Confederacy, had they been allowed to secede peacefully, which, by the way, was baked into the Constitution, the founding document, had they been allowed to secede, they would have been the fourth largest. 70% of all tobacco and cotton that was produced in the world what came from the Confederate States. Right. That. Right. Exactly. And the North wanted the the North wanted the money and and to not do any of the work. That's that that's right. the reality. Sure. And that's and that's fine if you if you want. To. Oh cripes! You dropped out. I think it's you because I don't have I have full bars full everything. Did you mute? I guess I'll call him back. I don't know what the fuck happened. I hate this. In the middle of an argument and then... Uh, I don't know what's going on. It's not even ringing.
Did his phone die? It's possible his phone just fucking died. Yeah, you sound like you're coming through a fucking ham radio, but... Let me, let me call you back. Let me call you back. Okay, why are you out somewhere? Oh, okay, he hung up. We have conversations like this all the fucking time. And they are always punctuated by somebody's goddamn service going out. And I pay out my fucking ass for internet and phone service to try to have the best shit. I should not have to pay this much to 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 not have good service or good internet. It wasn't no, it wasn't your side, it was my side. I was driving through a canyon. We have a few of those in the desert. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, it wasn't your fault. Okay, I was wondering what the fuck happened. Yeah, no. No, I so okay, so as I was saying if you remove the slavery component as a motivating factor, the only thing you're left with is economic, and then at that point, the war definitively didn't need to happen. Like, there was no... There, there was there was no... Point, like, you, they could have just rode through... Because, cause, you see, what, what just needed to happen was the North and the South needed to trade off on their, on their priorities a little bit. You know, the, the Southerners wanted the industry of the north and the northerners wanted the industry of the agriculture of the south and each of them felt entitled to it via the federal government being the center of everything to where states didn't need to just support themselves but need to support the rest of the union well and they the did north, well that's north, my point is up that until that carrying the, the, the North is feeling that they're carrying most of the weight because they are more industrial. They're the ones, you know, contributing to railroads and infrastructure and things like that. While the South is pretty much just growing cotton. Well, and the, each the, side thought they were entitled to what the other one had instead of being more unified, which is all Lincoln would have had to do if it was only economic. See, the reason you have to work slavery into a primary motivating factor is because it had become a major backbone part of the economy of the South, but was able to be passively, you know, moved past, moved beyond in the North because of its lean towards industry and factories and things of that like. So, so you, you, had a, you had a conflict between North and South into their economic structure. Now... To remove the slaves from the north is not going to be a huge problem. It wasn't going to really uh, damage them too much. However, it was going to be catastrophic economically to anyone in the south. So, so really, it's very hard in my mind to separate slavery as a component, even if, even if you say, well, it was all economic. You have to deal with the economic ramifications of the presence of slavery anyway. So you can't really, even even if you do make the argument that it was all economic instead of slavery, slavery still has a component in the economic strike. Um, I, I, I mean, I guess, but I don't think that, I don't think that that, I think it was like, what, 5 million people if dead million, during the Civil was, War? See, if Lincoln was thinking to himself, and he was, clearly, this is exactly what he was thinking, the North is better than the South. That that, it basically distilled almost everything that he did and decided to do from that core central perspective in his mind that the North was superior. They were more civilized. They were more evolved. They were more... So that gives him the right... What's that? Does that give him the right to usurp the Constitution? Because then you'd have to... I make... Well, I, I think you're... Well, see, that's the thing. I think you're kind of... You're kind of making a little bit of an error in judgment in that statement in terms of when you're when you're analyzing it through the paradigm of wartime. He didn't that's inherit like, a war, though. He started a war. 
that's fine. Regardless, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he started or didn't start it. The war, the war was there, and he had decisions to make that were wartime decisions. Like Yeah, after he gave himself let's, let's wartime take, let's, powers. Let's take it. Well, no, but let's... Okay, the government... Neither the government nor any of the people in America gave a flying fornicated shit about the constitutional rights of the guys in Waco. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, like when when the decision was made, okay, this shit needs to come to a stop. Okay, now you're making like wartime decisions and consideration of individual independent constitutional rights will have to take a back burner or you're never going to get anything done. Right, and that's what I'm saying, though, is that Wake, Waco, the, the events at Waco, are, are the, the, the sorts of federal centralized no, so power... The, 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 hold on, just so I'm clear. Is, that's is a your, little your, Lincoln. Hold on. Just so I'm clear, is your ultimate argument it would be better if Lincoln didn't usurp certain uh, constitutional rights of certain people at certain times and... We still have slaves. Is that is that where you're ultimately going? If I had to, if if you're if you're forcing me into a paradigm where I have to pick one, I, see, I, well, in this I know it's not a it's not a true. I, I know. Yeah, because the the, the 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 I South know. doesn't have to be the good guy to make Abraham Lincoln a bad guy. Well, well, the reason the reason I give it to you that way in a dichotomy is because I don't think he was going to get to his conclusion. Um, without breaking some of the rules. Slavery was legal. He was breaking a rule already trying to make it illegal. Like, the the, the, the revolutionaries... Yeah, uh, and you don't want to know how... You want to know who else knew that? You want to know who else knew that? Abraham Lincoln. Well, but I'm just saying, like, you don't look... We don't That's what he said when he was a senator. That the president has no authority to act on the... Minute. Slavery is a state... It was this... You don't you don't look at the revolutionaries and the founding fathers and call them criminals for rebelling against Britain. We don't, we call them heroes. Now they violated many laws, many many laws that Britain had set up. Yeah, after their to... rights as British citizens citizens were violated by first of all uh, King uh, George and second of all the Parliament who supported him. But that's not my point. That, that, that's you're, you're missing. You're well, that's missing my that's point. my point. You're, you're missing my point. I, I'm I'm saying that that the, the sometimes and sometimes and this is true that chasing the ultimate good requires you to violate evil things that have already been set up or things that would keep you from doing good. If a law keeps you from doing good, it's not a good law. It's it's very very simple. If, if there was a constitutional amendment that was keeping Lincoln from doing what could argued objectively good, then then it was fit in that moment to not be regarded. What you're saying is, and this is this is hilarious because the papers at the time that criticized Lincoln said the same thing that I'm about to say. The uh, Abraham Lincoln, with his wartime powers, had more authority to jail his opponents than any monarch, including the, the, the reigning monarch of England at the time. You're, you're, asking, okay. you're asking him to be afforded, you're basically saying, yeah, it's alright that he acted like an emperor. Because it, the no, ends justify no, the means. No that's, not, no, that's not necessarily what I'm saying at all. It's all right to what go I'm to... Is, well, because of slavery, you, it's all right to kill five million people in an act of war that you instigated because because you say slavery well, and well, you mean... You, you one, say that. You, and, and by the way, I agree with you. It's fine to say that he instigated it. That's fine if you want to go that way with it. But what I would say is, even if he hadn't, I think it still would have happened economically. And, and and by the way, because of it happening economically, the slave component of it would have been brought in no matter what. It, it, it didn't matter if it was Lincoln's rallying cry or what he was using to kind of like, you know, spur the North forward, thinking that they were standing on ideologically good ground or whatever it was. 
what, what I'm saying is that, that the fact that he pushed to the ultimate highest good of scenarios and said, well, if this thing is keeping me from being able to manifest the highest good, then by its very nature is therefore evil. Because anything that... Oh, you and want, if you uh, take a law and you apply it in a situation where it hinders good and promotes evil, you're now abusing the goodness of the law. Okay. So I don't know... I can agree with you that it is, in a general sense, good that a president should have that power. They shouldn't. I'll agree with you. It, it shouldn't happen. And, and I don't think that... Uh, I agree with you that it was probably um, a moral wrong. For Lincoln to ever exercise it, even if he did have that power, because either he was standing on the right thing to do, or he wasn't. I he wasn't. That's 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 what I'm saying. Well, other country, other countries abolished slavery without the fact. You here here's what you could have done, it, and here's what was proposed at the time. You because Thomas Jefferson long before long before Abraham Lincoln wanted to free all of his slaves. The reason that he couldn't is because slaves were considered property, which were part of his estate. And and Jefferson's plantation at the time was in a lot of debt. Debt to whom? The bank. The bank owned his slaves. He couldn't free. He couldn't. He couldn't bereave himself of property that he wasn't legally able to bereave himself of. That's the problem. That was the. That's the linchpin. That probably. That probably needed to ultimately be corrected by. I would almost say any means necessary. And I don't know if you know this, living in the fucking desert, but um, cheap labor, or because that's what slavery was. Right? Cheap labor will undermine jobs. It's, they took, they, that's the thing, is that, that, that slavery led to uh, land rich cash poor. And, and it's not like they didn't understand this because this was happening in Jefferson's time. You don't have an economy if, if you have all these people doing labor basically for free. <laughs> it's, and, and Jefferson was a proponent of adding a measure to abolish slavery in the fucking Constitution in, in fucking 1776. And, it, and the only reason they put a kibosh on it is because Franklin and Adams said that they wanted to have... Well, well John Adams, above all, wanted to have a unanimous constitutional convention it, 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 it would have been economically impossible to do that at that time no i know it but that, i'm not I'm, what i'm illustrating is that there was an impetus for it over time that could have been done without going to war with half the country and killing millions of fucking people including many women and children uh, and, and 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 young girls and women who who were raped the, well, no, but he, yeah, as part of the sieges, like like yeah, uh, right. like in Shenandoah and 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 fucking Fredericksburg and all this other fucking shit. The the the, the, the economies were going to make the war happen regardless whether Lincoln was going to start it or not. It was it was gonna happen. And here's you the know, other thing. Here's the other thing that you're not considering. Do you know when when term limits for presidents were instituted? With um, it was Washington, wasn't it? They wanted him to run a third term, and he's like, nope, two is enough. Yeah, but when was it? When was it codified into law? Oh, uh, that that I. It's the Twenty Second Amendment. Involved. That would be 1951. Uh -huh. Yeah, George Bush, okay. by the way, re retained his wartime powers for the entire eight years of his presidency, and he did similar yeah. things that Lincoln basically opened the door for him to do on precedent and not on co constitutional grounds. Right? Right. Do you think, had John Wilkes Booth not assassinated Abraham Lincoln, that he would have uh, just relinquished? His near imperial powers to do literally anything he wanted on a fucking whim without a single authorization 
of the of the Congress or any other governing body elected by a majority of people? Um. Um. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, I can, I can see. Yeah, I can see where you're, where you're going with it. I, I think I, I I personally think that the alternate is is actually a worse scenario. Um, because because I mean, Jefferson and Hamilton went back and forth on this since before the fucking Constitution was written, and this is where this is where the the. This is the primary issue that our country has had since time immemorial, since before it existed, right? Is if you're going to have a, a conglomeration of states, which are at that time considered to be basically miniature countries, acting as a single entity, more like a union, like the European Union does now, except for with elected bodies that are sent to represent them to the House of Representatives and, and shit like that by the electorate, i.e. the people, the, the, in the fucking preamble, right? If you're, is it going to be that? Or does, does the president have the, the, the full, ec the full weight of the law behind him in terms of the federal government superseding the rights of states? And I, I come down on the Jeffersonian side of states have rights. And I'll tell you something else. Um, that's how you get the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And right now, um, the Supreme Court would tends to lean towards my point of view at the moment. And I think that it probably leans towards yours too, because you don't end up with abortion getting turned over to the states if the if the federal government has the authority to do it, which is exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to codify Roe v. Wade into law, and if and we basically, um, the Republican sort of thought, the 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 Jeffersonian school of thought on on states' rights. It, we, if we hadn't gotten to it when we did, if we'd have waited till Biden, right, to have right. his full term and not had Trump before him, you would have institutionalized abortion laws that everyone in every state had to follow. Right. And that goes all the way down to, to other things like prohibition, for example. See, I don't, I don't know. Well, here's part of my struggle with, I think, one of your, one of your primary points, is I'm not entirely sure if I'm on board with the idea that constitutional rights, as in all of them, have to be protected from enemies of the state. But because, okay, so if, how does that relate to Lincoln now? Because because Lincoln, as the, the leader of the country, is you know at a certain level of discretion to dictate economic policy. Like the existence of OSHA is a good example of how that's kind of OSHA is a pain in the ass. It it forces business to do things that even sometimes don't make much sense. But ultimately, at the end. The, the, the inspiration, the reason for OSHA is a good thing. Now, it's run by retards who do more harm than good, as the government tends to do. But the principle behind its existence is actually a good thing. It's just handled terribly. Because the government that, handles for, everything fucking terribly, and it I'm has... Aware. I'm aware. It, it I'm has aware. for hundreds of years. That's, that was, that, that's Jefferson's argument. That's why he didn't anything want a federal trust, bank. Anything you trust the government to do, they will be bad at. I know. I agree. And that's true. That's very, very true. Just The justice system is a disaster because of that very thing. And they've gotten away with too much for too long with no checks and balances. So, I agree. I, I, but at the same time, I'm not one to sit here and say that if someone has manifested themselves as an enemy of the state, as in, 
like let's say for instance like like Maryland just decided to say you know what fuck OSHA we're gonna make our employees work 16 hour shifts okay well at that point I would expect the government to be able to find a line between you know ending that and respecting constitution but I don't think that that respecting the constitution should outweigh the right of keeping a you know tyrannical state from setting its own laws about workers rights you know like there has to be there has to be a balance and the, the problem we have is that when we notice the government is really bad at doing something instead of fixing it or reforming it we just let it go so so are you in favor of a federal minimum wage yes absolutely absolutely okay yeah well that's absolutely. really fucking socialist of you to say and and I think, and I think the states should have to lower it to match as needed too. Even though they have different economies, the the, the industries would fill in the gaps by what you see. The states have ruined businesses' natural altruism. In in nineteen twenties and stuff like that, businesses were naturally are altruistic. You didn't need to tell them to give their employees, uh, you know, profit share or health insurance. They just did it. Out of the nature of rewarding their their people for being loyal to them and staying with the company, they treated them well. They offered them stock benefits. My my great grandmother's husband worked for um, Edison, and he got tons of stock options that they were able to retire on, and that she lived a comfortable life on after he had he had quit. You know, 30, 40 years ago. You know, this this is how business was cultivated, and then the government started ruining that. They started saying, okay. you know, we, we want to force all businesses to be altruistic. It, as in, so so what part of the government do you want to determine that? What do you mean? Wait, say that again? So, so like, when it comes to the minimum wage, like we're talking about, right? Who gets to decide what, what that number is? The businesses, the businesses probably should. I, I, I think. I so think the business, so the business, business owners, what all get together? Thing. All the business owners everywhere get together in the United States. No, and- no, 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 no. There should no. If if, if I really had my choice in the matter, um, I, I don't think I'd, I'd have a minimum wage at all. If if it really came down to it, if I was you know given you know a flat choice on the matter. I would say there would be no minimum wage at all. And I, I say that for one primary reason. Uh, when a business doesn't pay its employees enough, they can't get anyone to work there. So they have to be competitive in wages by whatever geographical location they're in or they won't get any employees. Second of all, they need to be encouraged to be a tax benefit to be naturally altruistic. They don't need to be ordered to give, to give health insurance. They need to be rewarded when they do so. I, I think the problem with your argument that I'm having is that you're doing what a lot of socialists do, right? Where they talk about communism, when they talk about how real communism hasn't been tried, what they actually mean is if I was the benevolent dictator of the of the communist utopia, I would be, it, but that's not how governments work. They're elected and then they do or don't do whatever the fuck they will or won't do. It, it doesn't, you know, but with no checks and balances, there's even le- there are more checks and balances at the local and state level than there are at the federal level, and that's just the god's honest truth. Yeah, I, but I, you're you're kind of, you're taking away from my minimum wage argument a little bit, though. Like, I, well, I think I, I think I'm stumping it. That I think that's the real problem. Well, it's not a problem for no. me. It's a problem for you. No, because whether the minimum wage was $5 or $50, the economy around will build to match. It, you see, like, every time... Yeah, if each raise, state was a country unto itself. Minimum wage, every time they raise minimum wage, everything costs end up going up more. Inflation happens in, in, that, in that area, in that microeconomy. It always happens. Everything else goes up. So, when you raise the minimum wage... You don't make people more wealthy. You keep them right at the same spot. They're, they're making a little bit more, but they're also spending more. They're exactly where you found them. And now you've damaged the economy with an extra notch of inflation. That's all minimum wage does. 
it doesn't. Okay, well, connected to minimum wage or tax rates. So, do you think that each state has its ability to set taxes as it sees fit, or do you think that there should be a federal tax rate that applies to everyone equally all the time? I think there should be a federal flat, flat tax, and I think there should be a state adjustable tax. I, I, that, that, that's what I believe. So you think states have the right to uh, in, in, uh, to impose their own set of state taxes? I think they would have to, because each state has different geography and infrastructures with different requirements. So uh, I, precisely. I you would, there there you, you go. Triple. You've just made my argument for me. Each state is individually different from every other state. Correct. So you, the the sorts of things that will fly in some states won't fly with others. Because the populace is, varies differently from place to place. In fact, it varies differently from city to town to village to hamlet. That's true. That's true. Right. That's why we need states' rights. And we also need... need well, we also need local rights, local municipal legislators, which I don't think they should have their rights to go completely off the rail. But right, and that's have... why we need a limited federal government. Again, right. Yeah, right. That's, yep. that, that, is, that is the entirety of my argument. Here's the thing. The government... So like, the government can come up with something that that is an ultimate good or an ultimate bad and say we need to do something about this the problem is everything they come up with to do about it is terrible that's we we elect retards we just i don't know why i, I don't know why it needs to be this way but we just keep electing popular retards mm -hmm. and we have legislators who generally aren't lawyers writing laws that lawyers then interpret. And right. the motivation the motivation behind a law might be good. That doesn't mean the law itself is good. See, the, again, this is this is why my limited federal government solution I think is the best solution and and why my argument against Lincoln I, I, is so I, I strong totally is because I, 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 think, I think the federal government should have basically no business except in international It's easier to affect part. change on a local level if that's the state it's the state all right and, you know, your other your other option with Lincoln is just all of the states end up becoming their own countries really They I always mean, were well, it changed well, with no. Lincoln. Lincoln is the reason that uh, Lincoln is the reason that that changed. He is the one who he's the one who who changed know, all of this I, yeah. federal that's powers of the presidency. I don't think that's necessarily a good thing. I don't think I don't think the nation I don't think the nation of America would still exist if that happened. Well, I mean, certainly it would because we're talking about them each being their own country. It would have, I mean, it like, would have, if he, if, if, if somebody, a president or whoever, had stepped in and redressed the grievances of exp of of exponentially high tariffs and taxes on southern what? states for exports yeah. like tobacco and yeah. cotton, of which I already explained was seventy percent of the world's tobacco and cotton, by the way. Yeah, but yeah, in that scenario, <laughs> then you just have the independent countries. <laughs> that would have had a civil. There would have still been a civil war. You just would have had each one of the states invading each other, having their own little micro wars. You still would have had a war. You still would have had millions of people dead. You still would have had perversions of the constitution or violations. I disagree. Of it was done in other countries that before that. Without that, in a similar exactly. fashion, the Spanish, for example. <laughs> Don't fucking mention the Spanish, please. Well, you you went there. You didn't mention the Spanish specifically, but you you were saying that oh, I can't, I couldn't have been done without bloodshed. But I I've listed several examples already of times that it was done before Abraham Lincoln yeah, no, had I'm, put I'm pen to paper. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm saying in this particular in this particular instance in this particular country with the economic strife that was there, yes, it was unavoidable. I am saying that, yes. None of 
none of those other countries that you mentioned were in any type of a similar scenario of a series of independent states trying to make it as a union. This was a completely revolutionary concept to exist. There was already a secession crisis once in 1812 under Madison. The entirety of New England was ready to secede because they didn't want to participate in the war. And instead of seceding, Madison said, well, then you don't have any obligation to, to help. And that solved it. You didn't see a dissolution of the Union. They threatened to secede, their grievances were redressed, and there was no bloodshed outside of the obvious conflict of the war itself. You can't just do that, though. You can't just do that with every state in every scenario. Otherwise, you'd still have polygamy in Utah. Remember remember how long the Mormons were threatening to secede because they couldn't bang multiple teenage wives? Well, you've got Governor Newsom ready to legalize banging five-year-olds, and you don't see Joseph R. Biden. See, because that's the thing. Because that's the thing is that it's all going to be dependent on the guy who's in charge. From the 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 the, the president of the United States is has been and always will be the commander in chief of the army, the, the of the army, the Marines, Space Force, the fucking Captain Kangaroo, all of those assholes, right? And 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 if you're saying that you know. If, if you're assuming that might makes right, or the, the fact that the president is the commander in chief and therefore has the ability to to sick the the United States on on anyone, including civilians, then then that means he could just do whatever the fuck he wants. And Abraham Abraham Lincoln did do that. There, it, well, it, it happened in New York. It happened in fucking New York. He didn't, he, but he didn't. He didn't do it for absolutely no reason. I mean, it's, it's, he did it like because they opposed the draft, and they opposed the draft based on the fact that there was no constitutional basis for it. Congress was never congre- convened to hold a constitutional convention to amend the Constitution to put in a draft. He, and then he said, "Well, I have wartime powers." He derived wartime powers from a piece of paper that doesn't explicitly state or even hint at the fact that the president has the authority to do that. And then after the fact, the Congress, who was so scared shitless of of Lincoln's authority and power that he had with the military said, well, it should be assumed that it passed then since uh, he's had it for so long. Uh, I mean, what do, you, what do you do? I think I, I yeah, it's, you know what, it, again, it, you're, you're, you're going to be forced in this, and I understand where you're coming from, but you're forced to end up splitting, splitting a lot of hairs in this. Like I mean, I really don't think I'm splitting any hairs. You you are you're splitting moral hairs because whatever whatever you end up proposing to say not do this, you have to deal with the consequence. Like I I'm gave you a scenario one, where they. The I'm not one to sit here and say the Constitution is perfect. Clearly, it isn't. It's being perverted on a daily basis. Okay, it, it was written by men, and as anything that is written by men, it's not going to encompass every single perceivable scenario. It's just not. I don't want. I don't want to. No, get and it was designed with that in mind. mind. It was always. It was always meant to I be a living think, document. That's why. That's why it's written into the Constitution that the Constitution can be amended. There is a legal process that can be done to amend the Constitution to say literally whatever the fuck you want given the, the consent of the governed. It, it's supposed to be slow. I think that we should have slowed, slow rolled the emancipation of, of, of yeah, all of the slaves. Was, yeah, that, see, and I know you say that, but I'm, I'm saying that was impossible. That was impossible. The and I already refuted you, giving court, you examples of other countries that had Hold done on. it. Kate, the cork was going to pop regardless. And you need to understand that the North saw the South as moral monsters. Okay? The, the abolitionists did a very, very good job using, using the core biblical morality of the people at the time to saying this was a grave offense the way that we were handling slavery. The abolitionists and the Lincolnites had very little in common with one another. And let me give you a fucking for instance. 
Because when the foreign press, especially the English, by the way, came over to the United States and surveyed the, the, the states therein at the time to see which states were more cruel to their slaves, the North unequivocally treated their slaves far worse by the, by the estimation, and, 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 and New Jersey was named the worst. Well, they also didn't have as many of them. And and and, it and the Emancipation talk. Proclamation said that they could keep them, too. They, they, they freed slaves in territories that they couldn't they control, that they had no authority over, and, and didn't emancipate them in states that they did have control over. What fucking sense you. does that make in the context of freeing slaves? Because of the economic strain between the two, the two universes trying to coexist. Yeah, all I'm saying is, if Lincoln wanted to free slaves, why didn't he free northern slaves? Because because it had to be a unified thing. It, it didn't to have to be anything. He gave himself and absolutely way, he way, gave himself absolute slaves. authority Hold to on, do anything minute, he wanted. Wait a minute. No, because that's not entirely correct. What you said there were freed slaves living in the north even prior to the Emancipation Proclamation. There were freed slaves living in the north. There were no freed slaves living in the south. And that is that is before even the war occurred. So so Well it depends on what you mean. I, I mean I mean northern states had had already had protections in place for to accommodate for the existence of freed slaves where southern states did not oh you mean like uh lincoln's home state of illinois where uh, uh slaves or freed slaves black people in general weren't even allowed to live a law that uh by the way uh abraham lincoln uh voted for when he was senator of that state I'm not saying that the freed slaves were right. treated immaculately well. That's not my point. The, the, the culture, you, do, you see, this is the thing too. The, even if you, even if you said like, okay, let's get rid of slavery right now, the, there was going to be a cultural pushback. And yes, there was going to. But I would never say that. Too. I would never say was, that. I would never say economic let's economic just get rid of all of it right now because finish. it's not feasible. Let me let me finish. Not without killing not. five million fuckers. You, you're not again. The economic again. You're t so so. I, I already dealt with the economic pushback. Let me deal with the cultural pushback, because again, the culture was not ready to necessarily admit that slavery was wrong, and there were leaders of you know spiritual ideologies that were convincing lots of people. That it was wrong. However, they seem to be primarily more successful in the North, where slavery wasn't as much of a primary backbone component of the economy. You see, it's people in early America, as sad as it is to say this, seem to be about as moral as their pocketbook would allow. Okay? So, when you have a Northern state that says, well... Yeah, we don't really, you know, we don't really need the slaves and the abolitionists have good point and they're appealing to biblical logic and we don't really, you know, need them as much, you know, so that's okay. So let's, let's do some freeing, you know, type stuff. Let's allow for the component of freedom, you know, and then the South is like, well, if we free our slaves, we're all going bankrupt. Life is over. The world is ending. The economy is over. We're all going to starve. We're going to be left penniless. You know, we can't afford to maintain like this. So you have, you have a principle. You have an idea, a moral idea, mind you, of the abolition of slavery that is going to be weighed completely different on either side because each economy can handle it differently. Now, that strain was going to pop as long as the principle stayed in place that we wanted to keep it as independent nations. And yeah, if you wanted to just say, well, fuck it, let them all be their own countries, then yeah, we would have already were, a big civil war. They, we they already were. Hold on, I'm not done. We would have avoided a big civil war, but then we would have had a whole bunch of micro wars, probably for hundreds of fucking years. I, I, I disagree have, with that premise. You'd have Illinois you'd have Illinois wanting what Georgia has. You'd have Georgia wanting what New Jersey has. You'd have Maryland wanting what New York has. You'd, you'd have all these little microcosms of aggression against each other, and there's no federal government to keep them in check. 
So why not? I mean, I'm not saying that there's Central no Europe, purpose for a Central federal Europe, government. Central Europe was bathed in war for the majority of the time that it existed. Be- because of because there was no unity among countries. There was just individual interest groups seeking their own. And yeah, you might have avoided a civil war with kind of what you're talking about, but what would have happened I think is actually much worse. I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, we could play what about this. The economic and moral cultural strain was there. It was going to pop off. If Think about it today. What if, what if we found out that there was just some state in, in the Union, and, and unbeknownst to anyone for the last 150 freaking years, there's, there's some state out there that's just been managing to get away with having antebellum slavery? They just, they got all over the place. Now, does the federal government have the right to go in and stop that? Because they're going to have to violate a whole bunch of constitutional rights to do so. Well, I mean, it, it would depend on what you meant by that. But you mean it would depend on which constitutional rights? Is that what you're saying? No, it would depend on what you mean by... Uh... Okay, let's. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what. Let me make it even smaller. Let's let's say it's not a state. Let's say it's 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 a it's a it's a Waco. Let's say there's just there's and they're not they're not like Waco. Let's just say they're just people that are living in farmland, and every once in a while they capture a black person and they force them into slavery. Do we have to recognize their constitutional rights in the process of eliminating that? Uh, I I don't know. You, you see, this is the problem: is that they're they're already. I would, I would say there's some that we would have to because they would weigh heavier, and are a matter of of, of humanity. But there's but to to say that the the Constitution can apply in every scenario, including one as delicate and 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 off. I think it's expecting too much of the words on the paper. I don't know. There's a lot of fucking. There's a lot of fucking whataboutism in there. I I I, I can't I can't work with a hypothetical. But the, the the difference between your argument and my argument is I've I've given you clear defined examples of times where it's worked before Lincoln. Before any of this I, shit, I, heard you. I, I, heard I know. You, I heard you say that, and my response was, my response was, that because of this specific structure of it being a series of states attempting to unify, the particular moral culture at the time that was split down the middle about the moral benefits of slavery and the economic strife between the two of the North feeling themselves to being superior to the South because they had grown beyond needing slaves as much. So, so you, between all of these things, all of these factors, and all of these clashes of culture and lifestyle and geography, a war, if not many, was inevitably going to break out. Now, the great thing about the Civil War is that at the end of it was, was complete unification. That's and and that that is something that would not have happened in the other scenario of the states remain you know deciding to maintain their complete independence from federal authority. It the country. No, well, here's here, the here's country the problem. Was here's told. the problem I'm having because when the Thirteenth Amendment the Thirteenth Amendment was ratified in 1865. That required a three-fourths majority for the constitutional amendment to pass. It, hold on one second. I'm having a fucking piece of shit. I had shit going off in my room. Um, what, the three-fourths majority ratified, that includes southern states, including Virginia. Like, majority slave states voted to ratify. With the exception of Mississippi, which didn't ratify the 13th Amendment until February of 2013. 
So if there was a real impetus in all of these fucking slave states, like you're saying, to to never get rid of it, then why bother to vote to ratify? They cut the the. I mean. They could have blocked the 13th uh, Amendment where it stood, even after they yeah, had lost the war. And that would have been, and I don't think that would have been a net benefit. I don't. You, you so see, there was an. So you. So you admit what? that there must must have been an impetus to to abolish slavery anyway. There would have. There would have had to be. It was part of the culture. Even in the South. The, the, you, okay. Our then what's the point today, of the war? Why not propose the amendment first, and and then when it's not ratified, then you have a conflict. Kincaid, Kincaid. we're almost on the brink of, and I'm not the brink of, we're in it, even though it's not a violent, bloody one. We are in a civil war right now about whether or not it's okay to chop off children's genitals. Okay? We, we are in that war right now. It is, it is happening, and it is full tilt. There is a cultural divide. Panther, what are you doing? Come here. Get out of the street. Your cat is so Sorry, fucking dumb. Cat being freaking crazy. Get the fuck back in the house. I'm sorry. What was I saying? Um, oh, the, yeah. The, the moral cultural component is, it is a big one. It's a big one. The, the, the moral stance of the Southerners was completely indefensible. It was a purely economic argument. It was them saying, yeah, yeah, the way we're doing slavery probably is evil, but God, we just need it for our economy. It didn't, the moral, the moral component of it wasn't as important as the economic component of it in their minds. However, the moral component of it was the fuel for the fire. It was the ammunition. It was the gunpowder for the bullet. It was the, we are morally superior, this is how it needs to be. And the South did not have a good moral argument. They just didn't. The anti-abolitionist arguments were comical. And everyone saw them as comical. They were ridiculous. They had no moral ground to stand on. The only... Our economy needs it. And they were right. They were right. The South was economically crippled for near two generations after the Civil War. Because they now had to basically start from net zero. Okay, it was devastating. And and in fact, in fact, when you think of, you know, the poor South people, you know, that they used to be incredibly wealthy. People that lived on plantations and mansions and family names and possessions and, and then it got filled with trailer parks. Okay. I mean I, the economic let's... ramifications they suffered have lasted really even until this day. I I think I think at this point we're at an impasse on the slavery thing because I disagree and think that it could have been done differently. I've given like I stated several times I've given examples of how and when you say no, it would have led to many wars with individual states. Neither of us can know the the true outcome of that had it gone a different way, right? But my, my fundamental argument is that regardless of the reason, the things that Lincoln did in his day have not did, did, didn't just affect... If it had just affected the, the, the time that he was alive until 1865 or whatever the fuck it was, right? Um, that would be... We wouldn't be having this argument. I'm talking about all the shit with with fucking Wilson, with fucking um, with fucking Roosevelt later on, with 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 okay, with, with fucking Bush, the me, Bush administration, and the Patriot Act. It, it, okay, the things me, that the things that Abraham Lincoln did Williams. have been passed Williams. down to us, and now it's happening with Biden. 
let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Reagan, Reagan probably definitely committed high treason. I, 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 it's, it's, real, it's real hard to kind of defend him at this point, you know, to, to kind of try and blur the lines to say that. But Reagan and Ollie West probably committed high treason in working with the Contra. Okay? Would it have been better if they didn't? I don't fucking know. I know. I know. See, but I can point to several that, instances that's really where complicated one. that's a really complicated one to throw at. Would it? Would, okay. Would it have been stuff. better? Would it have been better if uh, Bush didn't throw us into a war based on a terrorist attack uh, that may or may not have been allowed by him to happen in the first place? And then uh, you know, well, tell, was, send us into a, uh, send well well they he, he was in fucking um, see that, that, that's but see now that's different see there was no ultimate good there there was no ultimate well good that's what I'm that saying the same all. authority see <clears throat> the same authority that was granted to Lincoln by himself was then inherited by his predecessor George W goes, Bush okay but the difference is Lincoln had positive results Bush did not. I, That's the difference. A, one positive result. Great. I yeah, I, okay. Yeah, uh, how do you feel? Let me ask you something. I, I'm curious about this. Do you feel like people should be jailed for hell, Holocaust denial? I don't know. Maybe you should ask Lincoln. <laughs> Because I mean, he. I mean, he. He. Anybody who criticized Lincoln, especially the papers in New York, but I, like, like the Postmaster General was commanded okay, by okay, Abraham you know, Lincoln you know, himself you know, not to there. circulate okay. papers that were critical you know of him, what? of which there was a list of a hundred and twenty different fucking papers, and one of the guys hired his own private fucking postal service basically to go around and distribute the papers and when Lincoln found out he had him arrested without charge without legal counsel de deprived of habeas corpus and then deported him to Canada a country he had never been to okay I, I yeah I, I can I can go ahead and not defend that one thing because I yeah that and that he was there. one among many. 120 you know, that, named. I, I know. I, I will. I will go ahead and concede that that is indefensible. There's no. There, there's no positive spin for that one. That the violation of uh, he, look, Biden basically did the, the the paper then is basically the 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 modern day equivalent of that now would be social media and Biden and his administration and Barack Obama and his administration did the same fucking thing with the federal institutions like the to to censor. Uh, dissenting opinions on Twitter, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram before it was no, meta. No, 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 I already, I already say that that is one thing that is a component of, of Lincoln's decision that absolutely is indefensible. No, no doubt about it. That that I will actually. Well, it's not the only do, do family think, heirloom. Do I think it automatically elevates him just by itself to the level of tyrant? Not really, but. But yeah, I, I agree. There is no there is no good more because because if he was right, then he didn't need to be afraid of the other opinion. If he was right, he didn't need to be afraid of it. Unless he thought everyone was too stupid to well, maybe he thought everyone was too stupid to be able to figure it out on their own. That's possible too. I mean, you know, and they wouldn't necessarily be wrong. Uh, but no, the, the the silence of opposing ideas should never happen. And I don't care. I don't care how perverse. Or disgusting, or stupid. I didn't ask for praise to have his channel canceled when he died the Holocaust. I didn't do that. I, I pointed at him and laughed at him and said, "Look how stupid he is." And that's that. By the way, is the appropriate response to that, not to try and silence the other party. It's to pick apart what they say and show how stupid they are. That's th that's the thing to do. And, that's and kind of what I'm saying. If, so, if, yeah, no, I will not. I will not try 
in any way, shape, or form to defend what Lincoln did in that regard. Yes, that was absolutely wrong, and yes, it was tyrannical to do that. All I'm saying is, an authority that has the high ground doesn't need to imprison, deport, or otherwise deprive their opposition of their basic fundamental human rights as guaranteed by them, to them by the Constitution and the, and the amendments therein. You know what? You know what I, I, a point that I could actually concede to, and I'll meet you a little bit in the middle with this. The war could have been avoided. The war could have been avoided. The moral cultural strife between the two, the two uh, entities, North and South, could have been completely solved if they had just reformed slavery. Now, That's I what I was. Now, you know my stance on slavery. You know my stance on slavery. I don't think it's an actual moral wrong at all. And I and I have yet to find an atheist or secularist that can be able to effectively argue that. It's a, it's it's impossible. I mean, that's the thing is that here's here's the scenario that plays out in my mind. Northern states decide that slavery is no longer a thing in their individual states. <laughs> Eventually, word gets out to slaves in the South. They decide that they're going to run. They're no longer property there. There's, it's kind of what the whole Underground Railroad was about, bro. I. I'm, I'm getting there. They move to northern. They move to northern states as free slaves, right? The next logical thing for somebody who who's the political party of the abolition of slavery that would be the impetus for these state changes in the north would then want to give them voting rights because then they become a voting block for your political party. This was done. A lot later, by um, Lyndon Lyndon B. Johnson, understood this in his time, and so I think that the natural progression of things to just leave it to states would be to eventually they would become such a large population in a voting block. The, the electoral college would become basically stacked in favor, and then eventually states would have to come to terms with the fact that had, that had slavery legalized, that it was no longer politically or f fiscally viable to have slaves, and then in the, the southern states that wanted slavery would have to slow roll the abolition of slavery altogether in order to compete with other states that, that did not have st slavery in a political sense. And that's, and, 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 and there's a real world modern day equivalent of that with the Democratic Party and the illegal immigration thing. Because that's what they're depending on. And that, they actually want to do that in New York to stack the deck. Now, in one case, there's a moral impetus for good, and the other is nefarious. The other is just power forever. But a lot of that, a lot of that power, in terms of the executive, is derived from things that Lincoln did in his time as a matter of precedent, which is what yeah, most of our laws are based on is precedent. It doesn't matter so much anymore if it's codified in a document so much as it is uh been adjudicated in various circuits and courts of law and then eventually it excuse me analyzed by the supreme court and then decided later on that that was enough to say the constitution says no. this thing like they like they basically retconned with uh roe v wade for the longest time so you know, let, let me let me add this into it. Um, I think the cultural war over superior economy and slavery, the arguments between where was I going to go with that? Shit, I lost my train of thought. I think the argument like you brought up with the trans thing is being voted on in much the same way that I suggested with slavery and what's going on with the immigration now. Um, in that people are leaving from states like my state of fucking New York to Florida and uh, California 
to Texas. And that's just a proximity right. thing. And and I think people are voting with their feet. And they don't want to put right. the they they need their kids to be in school. They don't have time to educate, but they can move house fine enough. And that's yeah, what they're doing. Know, um my uh, my point I, I was saying like earlier that I think Lincoln probably could have I, I agree with you actually probably Lincoln could have accomplished his goals if he was willing to reform slavery instead of abolish it now problem with that of course now that I'm speaking pipe dream here because if he was if he ended up pushing towards reform the north wouldn't back him and neither would the south it would have been a losing war it's not something he could have done but i'm just saying like as a pipe dream scenario like if the goal was to reform slavery instead of just get rid of it and let's just say that in some weird dystopian you know alternate reality the states would have agreed with that and backed it then he could have he could have had a system set up where it's very much pretty much exactly like what it is now just things are defined differently people would have different definitions to what they are yeah there would be a slave class and a servant class but it wouldn't be static it wouldn't be it, it wouldn't be uh forever it wouldn't be a, a certain definitive lifelong thing and those people would be given the type of rights to where, just like in the, the Jewish nation, where the slaves were happy to be a part of the household and the masters were happy to have them and they were like family. Like Abraham and his slave who would have gotten the entirety of the inheritance of Abraham's household if he didn't have an heir. You know, that type of familial type, it, had that been cultivated, if that had been Lincoln's goal, and I don't know, maybe because of the guy that he was and how eloquent he was, maybe he could have sold it to him. Maybe it's not as far-fetched of a reality it is. But that scenario right there is, in my mind, the only way I would see avoiding the war. I mean, you still have the radicals, the, the hyper-abolitionists that are just like, no, it's a moral evil, slavery just needs to go, period. And you'd have the radicals on the other side, you know, no, we need to keep slaves and we're willing to die for it. You know, you would have those. But if, if he was able to convince the country that reform was better than abolition and he could find a way to meet the concerns of the North, both, both uh, morally and economically and the same for the South, then yes, war could have been avoided and we would have almost the exact same thing we have now but things would just be turned differently. I don't even and understand the precedent. For, well, this is the problem is because Lincoln's own words uh, before he was president defy what he said when he was president. And if and it's not even really, you know, it's in some cases it's closer to like 20 something years. Well, yeah, but, well, I mean, he probably changed his mind. At, well, at one point, at are, you one, are you aware that people do change their minds every once in a while? I, I, I guess. I mean, I mean, I know you know that praise changes his mind every five seconds. I know you're familiar with that, but like you are familiar that other people who aren't mentally ill also do that. It's, it's, it's just that you know, on the one hand, and on January first, on. Uh, fucking 18, what was it, 86, I think, he writes the Emancipation Proclamation, and then uh, two years later in a newspaper, he says, well, if I could have fucking, if I could have had the, you know, fought the Civil War, war without having a free to single slave or you know, so he you contradicts know, himself. You know. He contradicts himself that way, and then well, on the other hand, he's like any any people anywhere being inclined to have any power, to have any right, have any right to rise up and shake off the existing government and form a new one that suits them better. This is the most valuable and most sacred right, which we hope and believe that will liberate the world. And blah 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 blah. And, and so he's on the one hand and. In 1848, he's like, yeah, states have the right to secede. 
And in uh, 63, 64, he says, no, fuck you, don't have the right to secede. And then the states point out that it's baked into the Constitution of, uh, of the, the country at large, and it's also baked into the state constitutions of many of the states that wanted to secede in the first place because they thought it was see, that important. Do you, see, do, you see, do you see how petty that becomes, what you just said right there? Do you see? You literally, you literally have states arguing about the legality of what they were going to do anyway. Well, it was in the you Constitution, and they wanted to make double sure. You literally have them on the verge of war, and they're trying to see if they're they're legally entitled to it when they're going to do it anyway. They were legally like they just, entitled to it by the know, Constitution. They just want to know they had a. They just want to know they had a legal justification for the thing they were already going to do. And they were going to. And they were going to make any that argument was, that for was that baked no into what, the con- including Lincoln. It was baked into the federal Constitution. And you know, they they wanted to make so sure that if they because they were they were so afraid that other states okay, well, might move. You, what what do you think? What do you think the Civil War was actually about then? Like let me let me ask you. I, I don't know if you. Agree I didn't with say it wasn't about not. slavery. I just think that it was primarily about states states rights fundamentally in general. I know that it was the right to own slaves, but at that point it could have been anything. If they have the right to do it with this, they have, then they, then they'll do it with anything. They'll you know states' rights to you know do X, Y, and Z with guns. So so you're so so you're saying that you believe the war really happened because the state said we should be able to make well, our own rules that we want to keep slaves and and the federal government shouldn't be able to tell us what to do. The federal and government the federal is government has afforded are, certain authority over certain things, right? And those things are outlined in the Constitution. But See, then, the then states really have specific saying, rights saying, on on social on. issues and and immediate f- fiscal issues then, then pertaining to the states. That, what you're saying then is that all of the states that sided with Lincoln are treasonous. Well, not necessarily. Because, 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 well, yeah, no, because if, if the <coughs> idea is that the South was right, that state rights supersede then all of the states that joined Lincoln were treasonous. The majority of New York disagreed with, with how Abraham Lincoln handled the, the issue of abolition. And they were fired upon. Civilians were fired upon for it. So, no, not necessarily. And and they, that wasn't the only thing that they disagreed with. I like think, I said earlier, I think you're laying. I think you're laying a lot of inevitable horror at the person's feet who it just happened to land at. I I see some of this. Some of this stuff. Like I agree with you with the whole silencing opposition. There's no defense to that at all, morally or ethically or legally. There's just none. It's it's not something that could be. But but in this particular instance, it's a little bit different. You see, because the, the I mean, problem that we're having here is that it seems like Lincoln thinks he knows better than the founders and, and authors of the con- founders of the country and uh, authors of the Constitution. Because I don't know if you know this, but Thomas Jefferson was president at one point in time. No, 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 no. Lincoln believed he was correctly interpreting the spirit of the intention of the founders. Okay, this well, is, like I said earlier, whole, Jefferson... This is where the whole all men created equal principle all men with the right to be free that, that Jefferson was freeing his slaves before it was fashionable I and wear. and there are documents in the original but draft of the that Constitution is, and, and that, that suggest that Jefferson wanted to have the abolition of slavery baked into the Constitution in its first and draft is, and that is what Lincoln inherited and he was and he the didn't. president of the United States at one point before Lincoln and if the Constitution does indeed give the executive branch, specifically the president of the United States, like Lincoln claimed, the authority to do exactly what he did, then why didn't Jefferson do it, of all people? You know, there's, there, there's, I, you I'm not saying to, slavery is right. This is, this is the fucking I, thing. I'm not saying that, but you end up, you end up siding with the South's argument that states rights have to supersede federal rights and that by in the, the way, majority think, in the majority of ways yes i'm in this case and and i don't like that because 
that allows for complete and utter moral bankruptcy and retardation. Because what you have is you have supposedly what is a uniform entity of United States where something is illegal, punishable by 20 years in one state and completely not illegal in the next state down. And you have what you create is is environment. Well, up until the early 2000s, you had the entity. same thing with consent laws. But that that's part of the problem too. That also should not be the case. There sh there should be a uniform to that, and the fact that all of the states vote for federal laws, there should be able to be a consensus on that. There, well, there then, then, then it just comes down to of, that. Just comes down to minutia, and it just so, leaves everything in the hands of the federal government. And every four so years, California. we get a new dickhead who gets to decide what the rules are all over again. That's, that's so California is doing something that I don't think is helpful. I, I, I don't think it's helpful considering the current culture and environment. And the only reason they have to do it is because the judiciary is so incredibly corrupt and so taking advantage of laws to destroy lives that basically the legislator is almost being forced to do this to try and hold back what is the natural evil actions of those underneath them. And they're extending, or at least attempting to right now, put into place a, a basically a Romeo and Juliet law, where if you are ten, within 10 years of age difference, you are within legal consent. So that means 25-year-olds can fuck 15-year-olds in California if this passes. I don't think that's helpful. In the current cultural environment, and the no, only I don't think it's done. helpful either. But I'm trying to figure out where you draw the line between what is and isn't a state's right, because everything I've thrown out there seems to point to the to the the conclusion, if I'm yeah, understanding you correctly, problem. that you, there are no states' thing, rights. William, this is the problem with your thing of the preeminence of the state rights. You create judiciaries like what we have now in every state where they're not actually looking for a moral good. They're looking at the technicality of their particular arbitrary judgments about how things should be without any concern of the moral ethics or problems that they have that they are running directly in But it's not always arbitrary. Exercising their rights. It's not always arbitrary. Because we've as we've already as you've already agreed to earlier, all states are different in some ways. Right down to the topography and geography and the availability of water. Look what California does with the Colorado River, for example. You know what I mean? It well, goes down it, to it goes it, down to the it goes down to the very fucking ground we stand on. Dude, this is but this this is the type of environment you then cultivate for people that are in the justice system. Is is a, you're, you're putting power in fewer and fewer hands, and that's dangerous. The Founding Fathers understood this. That's that's the problem that I have. That's why states need to have but, the rights but, that but they you do. Have to understand that now, now when you have that environment inside the judiciary, there is no now moral standard anymore. The judiciary mm -hmm. is just going to look after its own individual technical special interests. It's it's no longer interested in what is the collective you know moral stance of the United Country. It's now just pursuing its own arbitrary guidelines that may or may not have any justification to them at all, or it might be a, an idea of some, of a policy or something to be implemented that is intended to fix a problem or correct a problem or or bring a solution. And really, it ends up doing the exact opposite because it's been written by a complete and utter absolute retard who sold it to people as if they didn't accept this retarded idea he presented, then they didn't believe in kids' safety. This is, you, you, you cultivate the judiciary to end up realizing that it has no moral footing at all and therefore it just abandons it. Well, let's let's and grant your why, well, hold why, on. Let's grant why, How about I just grant your premise that that's this, that that's me, accurate. Well, your solution finish. is what? Let me finish. Let me finish. This is why it is absolutely insane and completely counterproductive to any type of ethics or morality. If say just as an example, a 21-year-old can date a 14-year-old in North Carolina, and it's a felony. And he can bang 20 of them in South Carolina, and it's not a crime. 
the fact that that exists, the fact that that is a thing, shows the moral compromise that ends up coming from from giving that type of states' rights position. It's insanity. Then where do you draw the line? And <laughs> where do you draw the line? And and how does your solution of more centralized federal power solve the issue but i mean as far as i can tell you're just taking you're just taking the authority from a, a lot of retards and giving it to a couple of retards because the fact that politicians are retarded doesn't change no no no, no I, that's not true at all because the people that are voting for federal guidelines are the members of the state because at the Each moment, Joe Biden state. wants to do one thing and Governor DeSantis wants to do another in his state. Right. Right, because sometimes right. federal power is is held by a complete fucking retard as opposed to kind of a retard. Okay, let me, yeah, let me put it this way. This is, this is probably an easier way to separate it out for you. The federal government should have a good amount of power to tell them what they can't do but very little power to tell them what they have to do. There's a very fine line there, and that's the yeah. that's the gray area that I'm afraid to tread. I I mean, well, I mean, if you well, don't see, like where you yeah. live, if you don't like where you live because of the laws, then well, the, the 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 reality we're in, where the judiciary of the United States has completely given up on being ethical and moral. This is cultivated. Right, and it has its roots in Lincoln, world. like I've been saying the whole time. <laughs> no, I, I didn't know that. That no, that I won't concede to. But this is the, the 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 allowance of the state rights is what has allowed the judiciaries to accept the fact to accept all of this retardation, which has then also caused them to completely abandon uh, the morality of their judgments and intentions, because it's impossible to look at something so ridiculous and retarded as to disagreements on consent laws and what constitutes rape and hey in some states now husbands can you know rape their wives that's now a thing you know that's taken over everywhere and by the way that's a great tool to give evil women because they just have to say that one of the many times that they had sex in their marriage, it wasn't consensual, and she'll get the whole house and all the cars and the kids and child support, and he'll be labeled a rapist, and she'll get her revenge, and and then of course eventually she'll go straight to hell and burn for all of eternity right under Satan's taint. But until then, the system is going to empower her to do evil, wicked, vile, disgusting things. Because the system has completely forgotten about what the nature of woman actually is. See, this let me let me explain to you my position on on why I think even if that's true, the states having the authority to self destruct is a good thing. The reason is because when the power to self destruct a country is concentrated in the hands of a handful of men, elected or otherwise, it's better for a handful or even the majority of states to implode in on themselves rather than the entirety of the country. You know, local legislators... If you want to fucking kill yourself, go ahead and do it. That's what I'm saying, in a metaphorical sense and a political sense. I think you... You know, you, I... It, by the way, if you ever get bored someday and you're just kind of looking for something a little interesting to pass a few minutes, type into YouTube, legislator arrested, and see how many pop up all over the place. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, there is something very comically ironic when someone who writes the laws is arrested by the laws that they wrote. There's something very comical and ironic to that that I tend to enjoy, but that's... That's aside from the point. Local legislators that write local municipal ordinances are completely retarded. Oh, yeah, without a and, doubt. That's true. And they violate the Constitution all the time. All the time. All the time without fail. Um, and they pass ordinances that aren't really helpful. 
by any stretch of the imagination. Let me let me illustrate up. to you where I'm coming from on that basis. I live in a village of a few thousand people. I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of like 12,000. The mayor of the town that I live in, it's a town and a village, it's complicated. It's what what is what, what is the town you live in again? Tree Mountain Falls River Lake View? Yeah, one of them fucking water features. <laughs> anyway, so I live in Frog Balls Water Feature, New York, okay? <laughs> and the mayor of Frog Balls Water the Mayor won his election unopposed. Uh there were, I don't even know, it's confusing because there were two other write-ins in the last election and one got a single vote and the other one got no vote. So I don't know how you have a write-in with no vote, but I guess in Frog Ball's water feature, that's possible. Um, he, he ran basically unopposed and he only got 175 votes. Part of the problem with that is that there's no standardized elections. So the even though most of the country that goes to vote on anything votes in November of any given year, we have our elections in June. So nobody even fucking knows about it. And, and most people who are running against somebody in, a, in, a, in an area like this don't have the funds to advertise, like to let people know that it's happening. So it's basically 175 people that know him and know that he's running... You that know, vote for him. That's you know, a problem, the, right? That could well, be solved by federalizing this whole fucking thing. But these are the well, retards. No, no. But the but the the population is retarded, and they're politically illiterate. It's not, you know, it's not just <laughs> retarded, though. They're, the, the real the real issue is they're all morally bankrupt. No one knows what right or wrong is. I mean, I even asked someone today. Hey, how do you decide what's right and wrong? And it came down to, well, it's just whatever I feel is right. Uh, and I said, yeah, you know it's what? A feeling. That's right. why our world is burning because everyone sees things the way you do. Everyone's you just think like a criminal. And I told them, I said, you think like a criminal. That whatever whatever you think is right is right. That's that's how criminals think. The, the, Instead yeah, of but the difference at between an me and what you good. And instead of looking at an objective higher good, you just judge by your subjective feelings. That's why the world is shit. Well, I do. I do everyone is morally bankrupt. I do think that there's an objective. This, see, this is the difference between me and him, or them, or what, whatever the fuck. I, I fucking, I do also like you think that there's an objective higher moral good. I also think that that people are born with the ability to act in opposition to that if they f feel so inclined. I don't... And, and I don't think that depriving people of the... I think that's a basic fundamental liberty that's granted to people even in the fucking Bible by virtue of the garden. By virtue of birth, essentially. And it's inconvenient for me and my perfect little idea of a utopia... But it's it's baked into our very existence that you have the right to be a retard. It's inconvenient, but I don't think that we get anywhere by depriving people's right to oppose, a, you know... A, well, you, don't, you, you may have the right to be a retard, but you don't have the right to be a dangerous retard. It depends on how dangerous, because now there's the the liberals say the same thing about conservative beliefs that we're, we're dangerous. We're ha somehow by asking what a woman is that we're endangering the lives of trans people. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why wars break out, right? That's I mean, why we're that's well. well the, the the fact that we're able to sit down and have this argument, and you and I are not going to have any fucking ill will towards each other, right? We can have a political discussion and disagree no, vehemently fucking, on a number of things without killing eyes. each other. I'm going to fucking poke the eyes out of your voodoo doll tonight, right now. I keep it under my pillow uh, to put my. I'm going to do a number of unspeakable things to yours. <laughs> Oh my god, is that why my face smells every morning? Yeah, and if your ass starts to feel a little sore.
I feel like people can, can. I feel like people can have political discussions and disagree vehemently on a number of things, and not have it come down to bloodshed, which is what. Uh, the, the, well, we've gone astray. Well, well, but we also we also number one love each other, and number two we have a we have a certain meeting of the moral foundation. Anyway, we're not, you know, we're not. Well, that's really where our country other. went astray. To be honest with you, we stopped agreeing what that foundation was. Yeah, and we we should have been a, we should have went ahead and allowed uh, senators and Congress people to openly like criticize and make fun of and mock their fellow people instead of having this false pretense air of required respect for a bunch of people that definitely haven't earned it. Right. I mean. Like, I- like, like, you know, it, it's so weird to me that, like, you have, you, the, the Supreme Court has decided of every right, you are within your First Amendment constitutional right to tell a cop to go fuck himself. You do, yeah. That has been, that has been substantiated multiple times, and yet, for some reason, if you tell a judge to go fuck himself, then you're in contempt of court. Well, you know, that's, that's kind of interesting, because it, not... I was just thinking of this. Not only did Lincoln say what you couldn't say, he also said things that you had to say. For example, he had people in the North jailed for failing to for failing to to pray for him at the beginning of a church service. That was a law that he just spoke into existence out of the ether. And we're seeing echoes of this now. With the ESG and the DEI and all that fucking bullshit, where not only is it, th- not only are is the government gonna try to and is trying to tell you the things you can't say, they're gonna try to tell you the things you have to say. You have to respect their pronouns, or you will go to jail. Isn't that a thing in California? Uh, what is? That you have to use someone's preferred pronouns, or am I thinking oh, of yeah. Canada? Yeah, no, 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 no. California, I believe, does have. They either have it on the books, or they're currently trying to pass it. Where yes, it is a crime to intentionally, quote unquote, intentionally uh, misgender someone. And now imagine that on a federal level. The, you you take one shithole and and say, well, that's hell. But at least I can go to fucking Colorado, right? Or or Nevada, or Oregon. Well, I don't know why the fuck you'd go to Oregon, but you really like trees. I don't fucking know. Rain every fucking day. Anyway, now I, I you could say, well, this is hell, but I don't have to stay here, right? It's another thing uh, entirely to say, this is hell, and everywhere is hell, and it will be until we're allowed to vote for someone who will make it not hell. Because that'll be the next thing that goes. You won't be allowed... In, did you know that in Lincoln's day, your, your ballots were color-coded based on the, the party of which you were voting for? And people were jailed on that basis... For, and the charge was, by the way, polluting the ballot box. Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. Uh, I, I, um... You know, I think, I, I think it, this, this all boils down to whether or not the culture that you're dealing with has a correct moral foundation or not. Right, and I think that that risk is minimized by, I think that that risk is minimized by spreading power out as far and wide as you possibly can. And, and, and what I mean by that is something akin to, to, uh, furthering the autonomy of states over the power of the federal government. Well, Okay. I think you dis. I think you dissipate the collateral damage me, that way. What if? What if? Um, 
So let's say, you, uh, like, since you're leaning so much towards preeminency of states' rights, how about the conflict between local municipalities' rights of legislation and the state? I think that the Founding Fathers would agree, and I, I do also. Well, no, I mean, if, if you're... No, you're not following me. If your solution to the conflict between states' rights and federal rights is that the states' rights supersede, then where do you go with the conflict that arises between a local municipality legislature and the state? Do, does the local legislature <laughs> have all of the power now independent of the state? I think if that, I think that municipalities... The independent of the Fed? I, I think that... See, this is the thing. I think that the f closer you go to home, the more the more weight your vote should have and the more authority that municipality should have. So, the least amount of authority is concentrated at the top and the most amount of authority is concentrated at the bottom, as it should be with the people. The people who actually have to is, fucking live my here. Point is, my point is, is that with your paradigm, there's no reason for states. No, you just subdivide states into counties and you treat counties... Which there is some, there there is some weight to, the given the fact that a lot of states had this had this at the time of the drafting of the Constitution had the population of any given county in any state you can fucking think of, including rural ones. I don't think that this this was meant to sustain as many people in each individual state as possible. So how That's would my. You how would you how would you differentiate the reach of now local legislatures? How far is their reach? As as far as their borders go. Well, but where are their borders? Like, what's what's the what's the paradigm? What's the algorithm for judging where the borders should land? Well, the majority of states' borders have been settled for a while, but assuming that they're not, right? No, Wait. but like, no, I'm, tr I'm trying to, okay, no, I'm trying to bring back to your point of, like, like, Northern California and Southern California are two completely different cultures. Right. Like, pretty radically. Like, very different environments, very different geography, you know, very different economies, you know, I, I mean, it, it's, it's almost a micro You might just solve the, you might just solve the whole problem by breaking up states into smaller states. That's one solution. Well, that's what I'm saying, but you need to, like... <sighs> because this upstate New York conflict. is completely and utterly uh, night and day between upstate and downstate. It, like, it, the city and, like, frog balls water feature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I'm part of a group right now that wants to separate entirely. I guess, I guess what I would like... It's called Divide NY. I, you, you know what? Yeah, I think I see the solution to it in my mind. I guess what I would like, I guess I'm totally fine with states' rights being preeminent. But, but, when there's a real, complete and utter disastrous moral catastrophe that would offend the majority of the nation, therefore the majority of the representatives that occurs, that then the Fed has the right to step in. Well, that's the like, point of a constitutional United convention. States, the more the, the majority of the people that make up the United States have looked at this thing that you're doing, and it is creating a complete and utter moral nightmare or catastrophe. So this needs to be cinched up, you know. Then, then I would want to give power to the government. If there, like, like if the government. Like, you know, the government should be there to make sure a state doesn't violate the Constitution. I, I think that the government's reach should be limited to federal, federalist and constitutional documents. That, that, that should be the extent of their reach. If they want to be able to have control over the states in a certain way, then all the states need to agree in a, in a collective, unanimous you know, vote that that is what they want. Like the power, the power to the government needs to be decided and granted, and also be able to be removed <laughs> by the people at will. Right. 
Yeah. And and so th- that is th- th- to me the solution is to I get it to go ahead and and get, concede your point, give the states their rights, but understand that those rights have to be enshrined within the constraints of the Constitution. The, f- the fundamental being- problem with our country in terms of how it operates is there are far too few states, too many people, and too many goddamn laws concentrated at, at, at too high a point of, of authority. The state has the states have too many fucking laws, too many fucking laws, and you can't like in New York City. It's a little bit easier to bust someone like pre legalization of marijuana. It would have been a lot easier with stop and frisk in New York City to bust somebody on marijuana possession charges. Where in upstate, at the same time, if you got busted with marijuana, they probably would have just let you walk because. The laws are enforced differently regardless of what it says on paper. Because right. judges decide based on who the district attorney is and a number of other factors, but primarily the DA, what laws are and are not going to be enforced and to what degree. And I think well, that if you break up that I, concentration you know, I, of... I think, you're, I think you're giving that a little way too much credit. The, the, the judges... The well, judges. I think I'm giving it just enough credit because I think that if you break the states up and and you, and you say, okay, states are going to have more autonomy to say what, what flies and what doesn't, I think judges, that you solve a lot of issues. I don't think... Interpreting of the law, they let precedent do it. Because that's what keeps them out of trouble. That's my other problem that I stated earlier. They they get to everyone everyone that works for the government, all the way from cops to DAs to probation officers to detectives to everyone is just trying to cover their own ass, and they're willing to do absolute corrupt moral evil to do so. They're they're willing they're willing to basically murder people unjustly destroy lives even when they know it's wrong because it's good for their career. Yeah, they don't govern in the spirit of the law. They govern by the letter no. of the law. And the letter of the law is the basis of their letter letter is not a document. It's it's typically a case that was adjudicated by a, a jury of peers in a, in a specific no. set of circumstances that might not necessarily might not necessarily apply in a general sense. And make no mistake, Christ himself, Pharisees of his time, the way that they were interpreting the law was exactly that way, by technicality. They weren't looking for the ultimate or higher good in any scenario, simply applying the most stringent interpretation of the letter of the law. And if that led to committing a moral evil, they were good with it. See? Right. That's what we're in now. And now, now the thing is, Christ told those people that they were sons of Satan, that they were demonic. Okay? What that means is that Christ himself, by using scripture, very explicitly and directly calls district attorneys, judges, parole officers, probation officers, cops, detectives, and everyone else in the echelon of authority that operates that way, demonic sons of satan christ himself our lord and savior has explicitly called the people of our justice system today satanic yeah i think that i think that justice has two hands and those hands are not not being weighed evenly there's a thumb on the scale because the, the, the district attorney of any scenario takes the position of the 11th man which I'm sure if you're familiar with that, you saw that movie or read the book, uh, World War Z. No, I can't, no, I didn't. I can't say that I did. Oh, really? Okay, well, the ele- okay, well let me explain it real quick. That's good. Uh, good. Well, Kincaid's ignorance serves as a plot device. Lovely. Wonderful. Uh, so the 11th man uh, principle is the idea that if you have 10 men in a room and they all agree on something or all agree on a consensus or a theory, it is the duty of the 11th man to disagree. Despite all odds, despite all evidence, despite all proving 
to the positive of the 10 men. It is his duty to disagree so that nothing is overlooked. Okay. So that's the 11th band principle. And it's, and it is, it is actively applied in many different real world scenarios so that people that are problem solving or coming up with a solution or figuring something out are forced to take an alternate perspective by the 11th man perpetually in disagreement. Even if it, even if it doesn't necessarily fit the evidence or make rational sense, it spurs the other individuals to consider and think about it deeper. Well, I mean, you can't get you can't get ten out of ten doctors to agree that Colgate is the best toothpaste. So, again, this is this is a principle. I mean, it's it's not meant to be applied in a in, in a in a strict specific scenario. It's it's a principle. I was making it's a joke. If there is a consensus on something, the eleventh man, or or as identified, the eleventh man, the principle is to disagree with the consensus. That's that's his job. Even even how implausible or unlikely it is, his job is to disagree with the consensus. Well, it's like I told you this morning. I I, I don't know, I don't even know if I disagree with what what you're saying. In in the... so now now a district attorney is a performance artist, a high paid thespian, whose job is to go and spin the narrative to their side and to perpetually serve as the eleventh man, despite all evidence despite everything pointing to the contrary, despite everything indicating to the justifiable innocence of this individual, it is their job to deny them justice, to deny them uh, a moral outcome, to deny their rights, and to try and destroy their lives, whether they did it or not. And even if they are provided exonerating evidence and information that, that would let the person go or should let the person go plausibly, they will ignore it for the sake of continuing down that path because that is what they are hired to do. And if they don't do that, it's portrayed as a betrayal to the people who seek justice. And that is a perversion that the people think that the state even can provide justice. A politician gets up and says, yep, we got this guy sentenced to 358 years. Justice was served. The entirety of the public should mock and scorn him. Well, they're trying to give they're trying to give Trump that many years, and and that is what's happening. I think you know I, I I understand what you're saying, and I don't disagree that that's the situation we find ourselves in, but I do feel the earth moving beneath my feet in a political sense. It looks like a lot of the things that I had complained about are changing. Um. I mean, look at the Andrew Tate. Si look at the Andrew Tate situation. Look at Eliza Blue or Justin Roiland or or fucking help me out here. I, I'm I'm missing one of the other big ones. Yeah, they're finding a whole bunch of people that were assumed guilty that turn out innocent. Weird. Yeah, it's almost like so, it's almost like there's an epidemic of lying whores in our culture. How odd. I know, and that's the thing though is that people are waking up to the fact that you know. Uh, we, you know, women lie too, which is something we used to know. Like, I'm not saying that all women are liars. I'm saying that, you know, also women. Well, it's not just women lie too. It's women lie always. Oh, I don't actually, know about that. Actually, women lie every day. Every day. Women lie every day without even using their goddamn worthless cock-sucking traps. They, they lie every day with their push-up bras and their spanks and their makeup and their fucking jewelry. They, everything about them is a lie, perpetually a lie, per, perpetually a deception to try and convince the world that they have some more value than what they actually do. They, their entire existence, their entire economy, their entire purchase decisions, their, their entire prioritizations all, all revolve, all revolve around a deception and lying to the public at large for their own gratification of ego. What a disgusting, rotten, foul, irredeemable, completely inferior creature. Oh, I think that men are doing a similar thing in the opposite direction with the abdication of responsibility and the, the perpetuation that that abdication of responsibility is somehow a virtue. Well, the government helped make sure to destroy that by trying to replace men with themselves in the households, and they did so successfully. Precisely women, my course, argument from earlier. Happen, and women, of course, allowed that to happen because, again, back to my original point, yes, women are disgusting creatures who have just taken it to their point to try and destroy men who gave them everything. 
what what disgusting what disgusting foul ingrates to to spite the people that have given them the independence that they have today yeah. to, to spite those individuals and those that gave them that gift yeah you're yeah you're a strong independent woman until the fucking a uh, toilet won't flush right God forbid your car need fucking oil or you need a tire. <laughs> Have your boyfriend <laughs> fix it. Remember that fucking, that YouTube short? That was, yeah, that was amazing. Hey, hey, I have a boyfriend. What? They're like, oh, your tire is flat. Oh, really? Can you help me fix it? Why don't you ask your fucking boyfriend to do it? <laughs> Listen, there are there are good women in this world. There's just it, I, I agree with you that there's not many. Really, name one. My wife. Oh yeah. You well, know my wife. Yeah, I'll give you that one. Guru lady. Oh yeah, no, I do, I do love Guru and Miss Guru. Yeah, she's 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 a genuine sweetheart. No doubt about that. I know she's she's not, been nothing but nice to me and my family and literally everyone she's ever interacted with that I'm aware of. Well, see, you know, you know, this is. Thank you for saying that too, and that is actually back to my like normal point. You know where mankind was given free will, you know, as to like what path, you know, our life would go down and like man was given, you know, the responsibility of choices that would lead entire cultures and civilizations down the paths that they were supposed to go. And women had a different choice. Women's choice was to either be a the greatest blessing a man could possibly have or b be the greatest curse he could possibly have. And each one of these women gets that choice at some point in their life as to whether they will manifest as a blessing or a curse. Now, praise God that all of the ones that choose to be curses to humanity and the men around them will most likely rot and burn in hell forever. Praise God for his justice. But that is their choice. That is what they are tasked. That is their role on this earth to make that choice because that is the only thing they can do. It is a true dichotomy. There is no neutral ground. The greatest blessing a man could hope to have or they're going to be the greatest curse he could ever experience. And it's going to be their choice as to what they become and what they choose to be. Sadly, most of them today choose to be a curse. The worst thing that has happened to humanity since the original fall in the garden, the existence of modern women. And this is, this is the problem. Now, your wife, yes, she chose to be a blessing, and that is very, very clear. And she succeeds very masterfully. And yes, there are a few of them out there, most of them in other countries than this one, and certainly not many of them in the West anymore. But they are out there. They do exist. They're rare. But that is the difference. If a woman wants to be a blessing, she's going to be submissive. She's going to be cooperative. She's going to be supporting. She's going to be nurturing. She's going to be kind. She's basically going to be nothing like any of these independent, blue-haired, modern, fucking lesbian theorists that are floating around out here. That, that woman I think, is a curse I think, to humanity and a curse to everyone that she knows. I think... Um... I think in Genesis, when it says God created Eve as a helper, I see that more of, well, in two ways. And they're both really the same way. I see it as, um, first of all, a commandment. And I think it's less of a helper in somebody you might hire to help you pick crops and, and that sort of way. I think it's more of a helper in like a, a rescuer situation um, in that I think women and, and in kind men also in a different way I think women I think men were created to, to well I have to do it in the correct order since Adam was created first so I think that I think that women were created not to serve their husband but to help them save them from themselves because I get 
lost in myself a lot. And I think that my wife helps me center myself back to the things that really matter. And the fact that she is the mother of my child helps with that immensely. It's probably the greatest, it is definitely the greatest gift I've ever received. And that's why we're going so hard on Father's Day and why I took basically a whole week off to spend time with them. And this one day I took for myself because I haven't had a day in a very long time to just sit down and do whatever it is I wanted to do. I had a cigar. I had an alcoholic beverage. I don't have time for all that shit most of the time. But... But my wife knew I needed that, so she suggested that I take the day, and that's kind of like what I mean. Like if I like, I'm falling apart. I have I have two fucking hernias. My and my wife encourages me every day. You should go to a doctor. She doesn't drag me to the doctor. She's trying to help me save me from myself. Now, the in kind contribution that a man brings to a relationship, and we are built to, for one another in a literal sense and in a figurative sense. A man is meant to protect a woman from the real physical threats of the world. And he can only do that when a, when a woman is pulling, in a, in a relationship sense, when a woman is pulling her weight to keep a man sane. And I think that that fundamental relationship dynamic is completely lost in the West now. I think that we understood that a long-ass fucking time ago. Like, I know a lot about the presidents, especially the early ones. And Abigail Adams, wife of uh, John... Um, I th a, Quincy is a different president. That's his, that's his son who later became president, uh, two presidents later or something like that. Um, but Abigail Adams really... Like when when he was when when John Adams was uh, the delegate to France to bring to get funding <coughs> to support the war effort against the British without bringing them directly into a war with boots on the ground from the French, she really helped him collect himself so that he could do the work that was necessary. And granted, he didn't do it very well, but he didn't lose himself in France like Ben Franklin did with his whores, right? And that was part of the reason that Ben Franklin never became president, never held a, a legitimate elected office. He was only a delegate. How he ended up on the fucking money, but, you know, Hamilton... Isn't Hamilton on some fucking bill or something? It's the hundred, isn't it? No, Ben Franklin's on the hundred. Oh, that one uh, I know. Hamilton, the twenty is the twenty. I, I don't know. I don't or carry small the, bills. I don't know. I don't. I don't care. But anyway, you know, so that's why. No, no Hamilton. No, Hamilton is the ten. I think. Something I don't like even that. have any cash in my pocket right now. I'm pretty sure he's the ten dollar bill. All I have is a hundred. But anyway. Here, put Trump on the hundred. Yeah. Hey, you should put Trump on the hundred. At least he was a fucking president who held office. <laughs> I don't think ha Hamilton was never president. He he was a, a twice failed president. And the only reason he's on the money is because he fought so hard for a federalized currency. Because he's a cunt, a dead cunt. And you know, thank God the assassins of the world exist. You know. Aaron Burr, I would suck his dick. Thank God for him. Painful. Finally put the brakes on that fucking bastard. I really do hate Hamilton, like a like viscerally. The bane of the existence of everything I hate in this country is Hamilton. And everything he stood for. But anyway, well, it is. Um, my phone's about to die, and I do need to get some sleep. Yeah, I should probably get the fuck to bed too. It's very hot where I'm sitting. All right. But good shot. Fun times. Yeah. Oh my um, god, we talked for almost two fucking hours. I haven't done that forever. 
Yeah, I'm I'm really good at dragging that out in people. Yeah, well, I mean, normally, like, like when I'm streaming or whatever, I sit here and I just don't, like, people will come in and I talk, but I don't really have anything to say to most people. But with you, we can have a sporting uh, adversarial conversation about just about anything. And one of us can even play devil's advocate in some cases. And it's just all in good fun. And I have somebody to bounce ideas off of that I have more in common with than most people. So, I'm... Well, maybe I, that'll make us popular someday. Who knows? I like that about our conversations. And I think that they're not like a lot of, like... Like the open rooms we used to go into, which is just mental masturbation about nothing for no reason. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I think I think Kevin, this conversation is good because uh, iron sharpens iron, as you said. And I would very much mm -hmm. like to run for a local office, and I kind of need to get my beliefs ironed out somehow. So, I don't think that this was just a conversation about nothing for no reason. When you when you do run for office, I'm worried that that clip of you saying that your spirit animal is an African American is gonna make its way out into the public. It it probably will at some point. <laughs> I ho I hope not. I I was talking <laughs> I was talking to somebody about that the other day, and they were like, "Yeah, nobody cares." <laughs> My spirit animal is an African American. You didn't even say it. You were simply reading the comment that that I put on the screen. That it was P Mars. P -Mars right? Yeah. Thank God he's dead. Yeah, I'm glad P Mars is dead too. Oh, and uh, Pat Robinson or whatever the fuck out. his name is. Who? What? Pat Robinson or. Oh yeah, Pat Robinson is is dead and probably most definitely in hell. I had I, I, I cracked a beer to him today. Not a Bud Light though, thank God. <laughs> God forbid. Yeah, Bud Light is definitely dead now. No and doubt about that. I said, it's did you ever get to back. before you go? Did you ever um, listen to the two Andrew Tate interviews that I sent you? I did not. I okay, yeah, it turns out he probably didn't actually do anything wrong, like, at all. He was held... Oh, no kidding. There's another guy who was well, held without trial or charge. I told <coughs> you that even, even with the stupid, retarded-ass points that Destiny was making, which is that you basically have to accept the foundational principle that women are stupid, easily deceived, easily manipulated creatures in order to say that they were a victim of him. Right, and, and they, even they the people capable, that they say they were victims... They were capable of making their own educated, intelligent decisions, that they were very easily manipulated and swayed to basically sell out all of their morals and principles. They're whores! They don't have... Well, the thing is that Romania said to a couple of these girls, well, you guys are victims, right? And they were like, no. And he's like, ah, you're victims. <laughs> That's how it worked in Romania. Yeah, that was that was actually one thing that Destiny said. Like, people people are can be victims without even knowing that they're victims. I guess. I guess yeah, you'll I guess. hear that in the first interview with the BBC. I sent you the one that he secretly recorded without them knowing until the end when he realized that they were going to edit the ever loving Christ out of the fucking BBC verse. And and uh, keep in mind while you're watching that that the next day after the interview aired, the the bitch Lucy uh, authored a full-blown apology, and the BBC apologized for the treatment of Andrew Tate. That That is also a thing that has failed to mention in, in both interviews, but is a present fact. Well, that's that's also pretty amazing. And I, I think that the wheels are turning back the other way. I think that things will be all right, provided that uh, we have... Uh, um, a trustworthy uh, oppositional candidate to the current uh, pedagogy of retardation that is the resident well, of the White House. Well, you know, 
the one thing to remember is that if you believe that revel that revelation is true, which I do, um, then you kind of got to believe that at some point God's just going to stop helping us make it better. And I worry that we're just about there. I feel like we're pretty much at that particular cultural threshold. We're we're on a tipping point right now. Um, yeah. It could go either way, and in the next two years, it's going to be decided. If if Trump can run, and or whether he can or can't, if he it, let's just put it this way, if he gets elected president of the United States and sworn in, I think everything will be okay. I think I think that you know, I I hope that he will take some measures to limit his ability. Uh, the authorities that have been granted to the executive gradually over time. I hope he balances that scale of power while he's there. I don't think that he will, but I hope that that's the case. And I I hope that this... I Because you know what's funny is the, the, the libs think that they're progressive, and I think that the conservative... Th- mind of thinking is actually more progressive in the sense that I think that the liberal policies that are being uh, put forward are actually regressive in terms of like like um, UC Berkeley Harvard uh, they just had two different colleges obviously they just had uh, black only graduation ceremonies oh that's not reminiscent of the civil rights era let's just put it that way I think that the wheels of progression are turning back the other way, and and we're the the conservative mind is actually the ones who are in the right, and I think that that that's going to bear itself out provided that we have a free and fair election, that where where the the primary antagonist to Biden's protagonist has a fair and equal shot. And I don't know if that's possible, but maybe. Okay. But I've kept you on the phone way too fucking long, so I'm gonna head off to bed. Yeah, man. I'll uh, I'll chat with you tomorrow. Alright, I'll chat with you tomorrow. Alright, bud. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Kiss, kiss, faggot. Later, man. Later. All right, that's the end of that. I I am very tired. I did not mean to go three and a half hours. I wish more people had the opportunity to watch this because I think that that was a super productive conversation, to be honest with you. <coughs> but I do have to go to bed. I have to return to my um, paternal duties, my husbandly duties. I said duties an awful lot. I have a really big paycheck on fucking... Uh, Thursday that I have to do a lot with to, to be honest with you and my wife is going to do her bakery stuff on Thursday too I don't know why I'm telling you guys all this shit but I do have like a lot of stuff to do this week I probably should like get a move on but I was good hanging out with you guys Quentin, I'm sorry I didn't end up playing fucking games with you as much as I wanted to. Um, when my son goes down for a nap, I'll probably message you if you're still listening uh, tomorrow. Um, uh, fucking um, Scotty, I'll get with you this week. I want to try to get back to um, Operation Daybreak and actually finish that because it's been way too fucking long and the other situation seems to have kind of resolved itself so we're back on track with that um guru i will try to find a day that you have off for us to play some fucking minecraft together um father's day i'm gonna be busy all day that sunday saturday i'm gonna have some free time uh probably in the evening but yeah that's about it i'm gonna go get a fucking beverage and it's hot in here, and my air conditioner is broken, and I tried to fix it, and I, 
I have to find a better solution without burning my house down. So, okay. Have a good night. Take care now. Bye bye then. Where's the fucking. Just clap for that, you stupid bastard.